13, 14, 15. All right, we'll give you time to get the uh, stream set up, and we'll start. We'll try to start right as the hour changes. Okay. Yeah, the stream's good start to go. Recording, I mean. Actually, up, it's up and running now. Okay. Stream's up. Um, well, in that case, let's do it on 59. Okay. Kind of flipping through tabs. <laughs> <clears throat> And since Twitch is up and running, uh, doing a, our usual podcast, which will release Monday. Isn't that right? Austin? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Start here in a few seconds. So we're doing it at 12.59? Yep. Okay, go. All right. What's going on, guys? You are here with me, Night Swarm, uh, for Mammoth Games, Inc. Games cast. Uh, with me, as always, Filter Cord. Hey, guys. And we have a special guest. You want to take that away, Filter Cord? You yep. Uh, yeah, yet again, to Pete, we have uh, Drake Cummings on again, calling in from L.A., hopefully have some uh, kind of some cool stories for us. He was able to get in on the floor at E3, so... Uh, yeah, how many, how many days did you go? And then, I guess, um, kind of talk about how you got in there. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Trey Cummings, as I just said. Um, yeah, I actually, I went all three days um, mm-hmm. to the show floor. So I was there for the full time. Uh, there's I have a lot to report. Uh, hmm. E3 was done very differently this year uh, because they allowed the public access. Um, mm-hmm. So I have a lot to report despite the fact that I played almost nothing. The lines were stupid. It was actually crazy how uh, long the lines are. Uh, this is this cannot run the same way next year. This is my first D three, and I I even know that they fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like there is was not it did not serve the purpose it was meant to serve. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. almost no one got to play anything, and so it wow. as a marketing event I think failed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'd like to just go into. Um, First of all, before I even play anything, it's fun if you guys uh, go into, um, like, why it didn't work and, like, what I think they could do better next year. Yeah, I think that would be interesting. Um, I've definitely heard some some kind of issues, but, um, you know, a lot of it is people like, oh, well, I heard some people say this and that. So I'd much rather hear it from somebody who was actually there. Right, yeah. Right. And, uh, I'll start with this, and that way we can we can end our E3 talks just with high notes of what I actually played. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this is the first year that they let the public in, and I think it was 15,000 extra tickets. Don't quote me on that, because I, I might just be making that number up. But mm-hmm. I thought I heard 15,000 extra tickets. It was a lot more. Just, like, walking into the event, like, they clearly define who bought their ticket and who was, like, industry. Industry mm-hmm. was a clear badge, um, and the uh, if you bought your ticket, it's, like, yellow badge. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... You can spot instantly who's, like, industry, who isn't. I would say most of the people I ran into were uh, were ticket buyers, not industry. And okay. uh, we'll, we'll refer to them as general population from here on out. Um, mm-hmm. And this, 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 uh, this literally caused the lines for any game, just any game, to be at, all day. Like, you picked one game that you were going to play, and that is all you did that day was wait in line for that one game. Um, uh, I waited six and a half hours to play Wolfenstein 2. Like, I have never waited wow. that line. For, I've never waited that long for a line at, like, Disney World or Universal. Like, that yeah. was insane. That was... How long a wait is. Yeah, that's, like, the same length of time that I waited at, uh, I think it was... Uh, a Comic Con to meet Stan Lee, and that was a poor, a very poor, uh, poorly ran thing because they booked Norman Reedus next to him on the same day. Uh, so wow. it, it was it was an overpacked scenario. But I, I do I do wonder um, how long was the demo? Was the demo like a half an hour? So you, I mean, do you think thing. that led to the the length of the line oh, yeah. because people were staying much longer? Yeah, there was a lot of long demos the wolfenstein demo was at least 20 minutes and okay. the other problem is uh for the wolfenstein demo specifically uh they made two other mistakes one they let you choose your difficulty which you know there's just there's some asshole who's like 
I'm good enough to play on the hardest difficulty and beat this demo first try, and then, like, dies and is there for, like, a fucking hour because he can't beat it. Um, I can't believe they let him do that. Yeah. And Yeah, and the second thing is they will not kick you off. Like, you wow. can die as many times as you want. You, They will not kick you off because they want you to have a good impression of the game, and if you're getting kicked off, they feel like you're not getting a good impression of your game. Yeah. But here's the thing. Like, some developers did it right. Um, which we'll, we'll, we'll kind of fast forward a little bit, um, but then I'll have to come back. No, no, no mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get into how they did it right later. I want to, I want to keep like a, a general order. Um, okay. why this made me mad was because I like, I have worked really hard for a very large portion of my life to get into the games industry in mm-hmm. part to be able to go to E3. Like that was like an interesting right. perk. That's like getting right. invited to the Oscars or the Grammys or like, you know, getting to go to a red carpet like it's like a privilege i always felt that you had uh, mm-hmm. for being a part of this industry and so the fact that someone could just buy a ticket now for like not even that much i think like if you waited too long it was like 800 but i think if you got like early bird tickets it was like 250 or something it's like less than the price to go to a music festival right like, that's not expensive for a three-day event uh and so you can just buy a ticket to go to this thing, and like it, I don't know, it kind of it took the impact away from me a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, I don't want to be too cynical there. Like E three's got to stay afloat. E three's got to keep making money so it can be putting on this event. It's gotten smaller in the last few years, uh, and then this year it was way bigger because like they had those extra tickets, and like you know, it is a cool thing for you know the public to be able to play these games and give their impact. You know, it's more is to give their input. It's more people giving input. It's more people, you know, uh, letting these developers know what they need to fix for their games up. Um, but so I don't want to be too cynical there. But I think a good middle ground would be, um, and this is kind of transitioning into the what they could do to fix it, mm-hmm. is just have an industry day. Just have at least one day that's just industry, so we can go in, we can play games with like reasonable lines. Like I heard in past years, cause I talked to a lot of people who had been there in past years. Um, yeah. they said that like an hour tops, like an hour is the longest you waited for a game. There might've yeah. been that one game, like last year's Zelda was an all year wait, all day wait, but like that mm-hmm. was it. Like that was the exception. Most things were like an hour tops. Most things were way less. And if you backtrack even like five years ago, people were like, begging you to come play their games like big budget games they were like trying to motion you in to like get you to play their game Mm -hmm. Um, these are so many games to play and there weren't a lot of people there and there there's so and there's a lot of cool shit to get at e3 there's a lot of t-shirts there's a lot of bags there's a lot of like cool different things you can get and you get those things by playing the game but so now you have to kind of like in past years you just you you collected them all it was like a pokemon game of merchandise and then and this nice. year, like, you chose. You're like, do I want the Evil Within t-shirt or do I want to play Wolfenstein 2? Like, you have to kind of pick, do I want the thing or do I want to play the game? Which is also, like, is also kind of shitty. You should be able to just play what you want to play. Yeah. And for, like, someone who's in the industry like me, like, E3 is also supposed to be a networking event. It's supposed to be a place for me to go and meet other people in my industry and be able to like mm-hmm. network and maybe right. get a job or maybe make a good connection or collaborate with someone on a project. And that becomes exponentially harder with when there's just all these like people who work at banks and people who work at GameStop and people who, you know, uh, are just, you know, are in college and stuff. Like networking with these people like does me no good because they're not in my industry. Yeah. And so um, like I would be stuck in line for six hours with like very nice people, but people who worked at like a power company or a construction company. And it's like, that's dope. But I was really hoping to talk to someone who works at like a company that I want to get a job at. So yeah. it also yeah. hindered my networking abilities. And so like the way to fix this is just to have at least what make E3 four days and make two of those days industry uh one of those days crossover and one of those days public or mm-hmm. one day that's public and then the re- sorry or one day it's industry and then the rest is public it, it doesn't even have to, it can just be one day like i'd prefer if industry didn't get the shaft and industry got like t- at least two full days of just them right. even if it's just one day that would help out exponentially 
Yeah, that's yeah. That, that. That was my thought. It's like you know, why not give the industry like the first two days, and then the last day can be like a joint thing where the industry people can still yeah. come and check stuff out, but it's also open to the public. So you know, mm-hmm. get your game yeah. playing out the days before, and yeah, or or make it four days, make two industry and two public, and then industry can still go on public days, but public can't go on industry days or whatever. Right. Uh, because like I, I realize you need to make the value. You can't make the. They need to make sure that the ticket price that they're charging is validated by how much time you get at E3. I yeah. get that because, like, opening up to the public, I think, for the most part, was all about just, like, making sure E3 can still maintain its money because it's very mm-hmm. expensive to run out the Los Angeles Convention Center. And yeah. a lot of developers have just been backing out. Like, EA does their own thing, which actually have a really cool EA Play story, too. Uh, Activision, like, didn't go last year, but they did come this year. So um, opening up to the public has had some positives, but... Um, you know, if you're not in, I mean, media still gets to schedule appointments. So media is still for the most part fine. It's just like everyone else in the industry who just like, it, it feels like they kind of got shafted at this deal. Um, yeah. And then like, it was insane. So I lined, I wanted to play Wolfenstein 2 so badly and I'll get into why in a minute when I get into the positives. Uh, so uh, I admit like the first two days when I got into the line for Wolfenstein, Stein. I got in there like an hour after the show floor opened, and they were like, "We're already capped for the day." Like the people in line right now are the only people who are gonna like be have time to play this game uh, mm-hmm. today. And I was like, "Damn, okay." So Sunday, I was like, "I'm getting there early." I got to the convention center an hour early, and that still wasn't early enough because the line to get into the convention center was already super long by then. Mm-hmm. And so uh, by time Sunday, I actually got into. The line for Wolfenstein, I had just made it. I was one of the very last people before they capped the line. And I got to the convention center an hour early, and I got in line about 10 minutes after the doors opened. So, Jeez. like, that's how crazy the lines were. Um, and uh, so, yeah, um, like, how they can fix this on top of, like, just making industry days. Because I heard they're actually not going to do that. I heard they're not going to change anything for next year. But, you know, they still have a year. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, they have a year to change their mind about that. Mm. Uh, because other big events do pub- like industry days and public days. Like that's how Gamescom does it, and I think TGS. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, another thing they can do, yeah, is just change the way that they do E3 demos now. Um, I think I this year I want to give them a pass because like this was their first year having to deal with that, um, and I think they just like didn't really know like how many more people would be and how long the lines were going to be. I think everyone was surprised. But, uh, yeah, like, don't let people play until they finish it. Like, give them, like, three lives. Yeah. Like, that's what some demos did. They were like, okay, you have three lives. Like, we know that sucks, but, like, we have a lot of people that need to play the game. Just choose the mm-hmm. difficulty that's appropriate. Or, yeah, B, don't let them choose the hardest difficulty of the game. Like, let them do normal or e- easy mm-hmm. and then say you have three lives. Play this game on whatever difficulty you want. Maybe mm-hmm. if they, like get killed like you know like in the first two minutes three times like maybe let them go one more time just so they can experience the game but have it kind of be on a case-by-case basis everyone's not sitting down watching everyone else play no one's gonna know if you're like let one person live four times one person live three you know what i mean just like yeah see how far into the demo they're getting and then you know do that also bring shorter demos uh the wolfenstein demo did not need to be 20 minutes it mm-hmm. was like basically the first level of the game and you don't. Wow. Need, it didn't need to be. It could have just been the first half. But like I got it. Like I got the. I got the the gist of the game. I got you know how why it was different and stuff within that first ten minutes. It didn't need to be twenty. Um, so yeah, bring short demos. Limit how people play it um, and stuff like that. I want to say bring more kiosks, but like honestly, a lot of places had really big booths and they had a lot of kiosks, and that wasn't really the issue. It was just the length of the demo and just how many people there were. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, also I think there should be other ways to get the merch besides just playing the games if it takes all day to play one game like it's advantageous for you to give out as much merch as you can because if people wear your shirt that's walking advertising and so yeah. it made sense in years past where you played the game to get the merch because you want them to play the game so they talk about the game and then you gave them merch so they'd wear it around well now since a lot of people don't get that opportunity to play the game at all, there's got to be other ways to get out the merchandise. So, um, so yeah, so that was kind of, that's kind of my report on like E3, the event. Do you guys have any questions about like the event itself before I get into like what I, what I did, what I was able to play? 
Yeah, I, uh, did you uh, get to check out anything um, outside of the convention center? I know there were a lot of things that were happening, um, you know, that, that we saw from the home or whatever, yeah. like Bethesda Land, um, I, Devolver. I'm not sure if they got to do something or they tried to do something and it didn't work. I know they usually have like a back lot thing in a parking lot. Um, that sounds really cool, but... Just wondering if you yeah, so got to uh, a few of them I did and a few I didn't. I'm really mad about Bethesda Land because I didn't know it was a thing. Like, because hmm. I don't know how much tickets are to go to the Bethesda's E3 press conference. I know it's open to the public, but uh, I don't. It might be free. I'm not sure. But by the time I like I got around, I remembered like, oh yeah, I can go to that because I live in LA. Um, I looked out and tickets were already sold out, and I was like, oh, that, hmm. that's that, that's too bad. Like, I won't get to see their press conference live in person. I had no idea they actually threw uh, a carnival. Like, hmm. um, I've heard from people, like, who went, like, it was, like, actually, like, a, they built a theme park. For, yeah. Like, a pop-up theme park. For, uh, they built Bethesda with, Land. That's with the Ferris thing. wheel and, yeah, like, everything that, that I crazy. saw, everything that I saw from home and just from some of the other industry yeah, professionals that I know that were there. Um, yeah, I mean, they had things that, um, that they... You know, that they would have, like, even out in the road when they were touring for, I think it was, like, Skyrim or something, they had that, like, mobile food truck with that, like, um, um, what was it, like, dragon leg turkey, uh, like, turkey leg thing that's just, like, just a massive turkey leg that looks like something a barbarian would eat. <laughs> and I saw people walking around with those and, you know, tons of other stuff. Um, I, I think even one guy... Free cocktails, like, each... Station oh, cool. had like its own specific like mixed drinks that they made that themed to the game and it was all free. Oh, um, that's awesome. And uh, and stuff. So yeah, like I I hope they do Bethesda Land again next year. Like I'm absolutely gonna get on that. Like I'm gonna be checking out like three months before the press conference. <laughs> I'm gonna be checking like that website every day to get my ticket. You know. Um, but so I didn't get to go to that. I did get to, and I didn't get to go to. Um, they, uh, Jeff Keeley, um, the patron saint of games journalism, right. uh, uh, did a thing called uh, E3 Coliseum, and it was held, yep. I believe, at the Nokia or the Microsoft Theater, whichever one it's called now. Um, just like it's just around the corner, like it's literally like maybe a two hundred foot walk, two hundred meters. I don't know how distance works. It's really close. It's like maybe yeah. a block away, and uh, I would have gone to that. But, um, it because anyone with an E three badge can go. But it was you know I figured like it was panels. Um, and I figured like everything else, the line to get into the panels are going to be huge, and I'd rather be on the show floor than waiting in line to see something I can see the like the live stream archive of later. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't bother with that, but it was an option. Uh, and I don't know. I Devolver was supposed to be their do their Devolver picnic, but that got sh shut down because of like weird like zoning laws like you like they want to do it in a parking lot and like the laws of los angeles county didn't allow it or something yeah um and so <laughs> i heard they did something somewhere else but i didn't see it i didn't see it anywhere um, um and then uh outside the convention center sony had a giant merch store uh which um i don't have any money so i didn't stop inside kind of like peaked um because it was like an open air market so i was kind of like like look from afar at their wares uh and they had like uh trico plushies like uh tre a trico stuffed animals and they looked That's adorable cool. i would nice. love one i have no idea how much they were but yeah i was like i however much it is it's too much uh, that's 50 bucks probably I bet. <laughs> yeah and then uh the one thing i did stop by at every day was outside of the nokia theater um twitch had a giant like esports stage and they had espn there as well reporting on it and they just they played a different fighting game they had a fighting game tournament each each day i never stayed for the full thing but i was it started like right after the show floor closed so you know people would go out and then they would watch the fighting game tournament i never stayed for the full thing uh but uh, i caught the first bits of each of them i think the first day they did street fighter five uh the second day they did I don't remember what the second day was. Um, I want to say it was Marvel vs. Capcom, but I don't remember. And the third day was uh, um, Injustice 2. 
so uh so that's cool that they had that like kind of blown out um and so those are all the auxiliary events that were going on around e3 that i knew of Mm -hmm. um but uh i know a lot of like the companies and stuff have like parties i was talking to the uh some of the first party sony guys and uh they're like yeah after this we're going to the sony worldwide studios party i was like ah that sounds cool but obviously i couldn't get in um so you just gotta uh, act like you belong there and walk in (laughs) yeah (laughs) they they, they wouldn't tell me where it was um Mm. but yeah there's a lot of like parties and mixers and events that i'm just like not in the know enough to be able to get into uh but uh yet but yeah. uh yeah there's there's a lot of stuff that happens around e3 um but uh i i was not able to go to very much of it um i don't know if you would consider ea play to be its own auxiliary event i suppose mm. it is um it doesn't take place near the convention center but uh it's um uh it's actually it's walking distance from my apartment. It's in Hollywood. It's just like three blocks away yeah. from me. So I walked to nice. it. Uh, I have a cool EA Play story. I don't know where you want me to fit that in. Um, um, I mean, I don't know. We kind of have a, uh, like, we run off a really, we play we play it fast yeah, and loose right. here at MGI. So, uh, yeah. there's you know, no we're, rules. there's no rules. Wherever you feel like uh, tossing it in, yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll, um, I'll fit that in um, before I talk about E3 proper. So, okay. uh, me and my buddy Ryan, because E3 Play is a hundred percent open to the public. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't you don't need to be industry. Like, industry doesn't matter. Like, you just you go to the website, you sign up, you go for free. So, me and my roommate went uh, to EA Play, and the, they sent us an email beforehand. They said, "Get here early. There's going to be a lot of people. We gave out more tickets than there the space." And we're <laughs> like, okay, cool. Well, like, it's a free event, and they just want to make sure that they have a full house. So, like, it makes yeah, sense that they right. open up because a lot of people just probably just, like, sign up and don't show. So, yeah. we're like, okay, cool. We'll we'll get there a half hour early. <laughs> that was uh, not early enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we should have gotten there, like, two hours early. Wow. Um, there was a massive amount of people, and, like, the, the, uh, the Hollywood Palladium, where this is being held, was at capacity. Like, by the time we got there, they are just, like, um, like, after they opened, and, like, they let, like, the first few whatever many people in, they're, like, a guy went down the line and says, look, we're at capacity, everyone go home. We're, we can't <laughs> let anyone else in for the rest of the day. And we were, like, well, what if, like, people leave? And they are like, even if people left, there's no way, like, we'd be able to get people this far down the line. Wow. Like, just go home. That's just crazy. Wow. And, yeah. So they're they're like, here's this bag though, like as as a uh, as a consolation prize, and I'm just like, I'm like my to my roommate Ryan, I'm like Ryan, this is bullshit. We're getting into that. We're getting into the play. He's like, I don't know, dude. They, they said they said or not. I'm like Ryan, they're testing our faith. <laughs> we are being tested here. We for cannot real. leave. Can't um, give up that easy. Actually, leave for a minute. I ran to. I ran to Office Depot to print off more resumes because I needed <laughs> extra time. So I came back and uh, barely moved. And, like, the line started moving a good bit. And as we got farther down, someone else came and he was like, the line moving is an illusion. No one is getting in. People are just leaving. Everyone should leave. You cannot get in. And I'm just like, no. You're like, I don't trust EA. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll trust you, EA. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'll just stick it in line. Uh, like, the event's only four hours. Like, whatever. I'll just wait here. Um, and so yeah. then we kept moving because people kept leaving. And then a third person came through and was like, you're wasting your time. Leave. And then at this point, my roommate's like, all right, man. Like, we, sh- we should just go. I'm like, no, we're so close to the front. He's like, yeah, we're close to the front, but the gates aren't open. I'm like, no. No, trust me. And then, like, maybe 30 minutes later, they open the gates again, and they let us in. Mm-hmm. And... Nice. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, my faith was rewarded. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we got in, uh, um, and it was it was pretty cool. Uh, it was pretty crowded, but I was just happy just to be in there. We took a bunch of pictures. They had, like, a giant Titanfall statue. Uh, they had a, uh, a bench set up with some Sims, and, like, you sat in the middle of the bench, and, like, you were a Sim, and then they took your picture. Um there was, uh, they gave out free monsters, which I don't even like energy drink, but I was like, hey, it's free. So I took them. Yep. Uh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> then, uh, That's how I live uh, my life. Yeah, we played, <laughs> we, 
we played one game um because at this point we only had like two hours and like honestly like it was like about an hour and a half for each game mm-hmm. and so we went we picked we chose need for speed is the game we both wanted to play and so uh yeah i got to play need for speed it's pretty fun um the demo like a, a e3 demo should be it's relatively short uh it's very hard to die um and uh and stuff but uh uh, I had a few issues with it. Um, you know, you always see like I know you guys probably saw the demo. So you're driving through and you hit cars by like ramming into them. It mm-hmm. always kind of seemed that I was faster than the cars chasing me. But you can't proceed until you destroy the cars. So I kept having to like slow down to hit the cars. Uh, maybe if I had just kept going, they would have caught up to me eventually. But that just felt a little weird to me. Uh, some some of them sure they can iron out. Uh, also, um, the crash cam. Uh, is not every time it's not as frequent as it was in the e3 demo like the stage demo right but it was still a little too frequent uh, mm-hmm. i hope there's a way to like adjust how often that is because it's cool the first few times and then it just becomes distracting uh also mm-hmm. you it slows down but you don't stop so sometimes uh-huh. like i would hit someone and the crash cam would go into like this like cool shot of the other character of the other car crashing but then when it snapped back to me i just like be ran into a pole He's like, I can. Oh, uh, okay. So that's that's probably like a uh, bug, so, hopefully. Yeah. So it's like I'm hoping like either that's shorter, you can maybe turn it off, or like it could also like do a pan out where you can see the crash, but also see where your car is, so you can still like steer away from obstacles. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, it's usually cool. I'm super in on the new Need for Speed. Uh, okay. I've never bought a Need for Speed game, so um, not like I'm a fan of the franchise. I just think this one looks super interesting. Uh, and then the craziest thing to happen at EA Play was, like, the musical performances. I wasn't expecting that. I took a Snapchat when we first got in. Uh, it, that was a joke. I, I took a Snapchat of, like, the venue, and I was, like, here at the EA Music Festival. Because it <laughs> felt like a music festival. It yeah. felt like a um, like a cool, like, vibe to it. There was a DJ, like, up on this giant booth playing music, and he was playing, like, really good music and stuff. And, like, everything was bright and colorful. And, like, it felt like a music festival. And I was like, oh, I'll make a little Snapchat joke. And mm-hmm. then, like, the joke became reality because, like, there was a music. There was there was one guy that came out, and he was pretty good, but I didn't really know him. And then Nas came out. Whoa! Like, huge, <laughs> huge hip hop le- legend Nas just performing for this EA event. Uh, and I'm like, whoa! Times are tough, dude. You got to pay those bills, you know. <laughs> He's got those student loans. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Nas isn't super relevant anymore, but he's still like a huge name. I'm sure booking him was not yeah. cheap on the Ace part. No doubt, free event, uh, and so that's crazy. I got to see Nas live, and I was not expecting that. So, uh, so yeah, EA Play super fun, and like hmm. it, it feels all the better because like we were told we weren't getting in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That always makes things a lot better when it's like you you achieve some sort of victory. It, it's just like kind of a like fruits of your labor, you know? Yeah, and it's kind of the same thing as, like, the, um, you know, the, like, I'm not expecting anything out of this type thing when you, like, go in totally clean because you're just assuming, right. like, okay, this isn't going to work. Like, uh, you know, I'm not going to see anything. And then when you do see something, it's awesome. Yeah, for sure. So um, do you guys want to hear a little bit about the show floor? Yeah, um, yeah. Sure. I mean, there's... There was a, a ton of cool things that we, you know, we not only, like, live streamed some of the stuff, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, hearing a first-hand experience is definitely, definitely a lot yeah. better, I think. Actually, um, can I ask one question, one question really quick before you started in on that? Um, I heard that the security was, like, a full joke. Um, I heard from some, uh, I, like, Kotaku talked about it, and a couple other people, I think, that are, like, kind of freelance or not necessarily attached to anybody permanently that were saying like there was a lot of security guards walking around but like they never had their badges checked and they never had their bags checked <laughs> like th- did you have any experience with that uh so uh austin i'm actually not sure what you said uh our discord chat like broke up real hard uh oh. can you start back from security? oh sure yeah um yeah i heard that there was um a lot of people who were uh like the, there was a lot of security, but they weren't really doing anything that they were like uh, just kind of standing around. And I heard that there was like 
people walking around with bags that weren't checked at the door and that they weren't checking badges to like confirm that people were supposed to be there? Um, weird. So, uh, yeah, no one checked my bag. I just, um, I kind of assumed I walked through a metal detector at some point, but not mm -hmm. looking back, I don't think I ever did. That's so, what I heard. Yeah, no, no one checked my bag. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's strange. Uh, uh -huh. especially since it's open to the public now. I guess, again, maybe just a bleed over from, like, years past, like, it wasn't necessary because, like, we're all industry, like, it's, like, not as likely that someone's going to go postal, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, no, badges, though, they, um, they, uh, maybe it didn't feel like your bag, badge was being checked, but it was, because what you did was you walked through a, uh, a black light to get, it, like, every door had a black light above it, and there was a little, like, symbol on your badge that lights up, um, under a black light, and mm -hmm. so as you're walking through, they're just checking to make sure that little symbol lights up. If okay. it doesn't, you have a fake, and if you don't have a badge at all, they'd ask you to, like, take, take your badge out and, like, wear your badge, um, so, um, maybe it didn't seem like it, but... Uh, okay, so it was kind of like a... Gaps. Go ahead. It was kind of like what? I was going to say, it's kind of like, they were, they were kind of like, um, doing like a retroactive check and not necessarily like an upfront check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't see anyone in there who didn't have a badge. Um, mm -hmm. and there was a few times that, like... I would I know him, this never happened to me, but a few people like got pulled to the side and then they like have a little black like pen and they shine at them. So I guess like if they didn't like notice it like as they're walking through, they like call them back to check it. So like mm -hmm. I thought security was fine. Um Okay. Uh, it wasn't airport levels, like um, you know, it wasn't right. super thorough. But like as far as like whether or not you were supposed to be there, I, I thought like they were checking that like pretty well. So like okay. I don't know how you would sneak in. If someone's like you have to sneak into E three, I don't know how I'd do it. Uh, yeah, it's, and you know, these are, um, these are also like games journalists who, you know, are probably, they look like they're meant to be there anyways, and yeah. if they're doing some sneaky shit, somebody might be like, oh, that's so-and-so, I read his reviews all the time, he's good to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, alright, I can, I can see that. So, um, but yeah, go ahead and, uh, tell us some of the stuff you saw on the floor. Yeah, the, the floor itself is cool. A lot of people brought their, their A-game for these booths. Um, uh, special shout-out to actually Atlas uh, had mm -hmm. a dope booth uh, for, um, for Yakuza. They just, like, built okay. one of the streets from that game. Yeah. It was, like, a, like a shady right. back alley in, uh, in Kiwami. Um, That's cool. Or not Kiwami. I don't remember what the name of that town is. But, uh, yeah, uh, they had that Capcom really had a cool booth. They had a giant monster from monster hunter uh they had mm. ultron just sitting on a throne ultron sigma from uh the new marvel's capcom oh wow uh, and then they had a giant wall where they had the history of street fighter so it'd be like they had like a television screen playing footage from all the games and then underneath like a description about like what each version added to the franchise okay um, that's pretty cool uh their harvest moon had a giant wall where they, like, showed every Harvest Moon game. There's uh -huh. been, like, over 60 of those games. Oh, a lot of them released only in Japan. And they they were probably... Uh, usually when they did a port, it would have a different name. And there was even some stuff, like, the one on the N64 was different than the one on the PlayStation, so... I can see it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I had no idea there were so many. Um, yeah. There was... Uh, uh, Bethesda had a big booth. It wasn't especially interesting. Um, it was just kind of basic. There was... Uh, but there was like their, for their VR things, uh, mm -hmm. they didn't have very VR, very many VR stations. So they put you in this giant glass box, and like everyone could just watch you play. Um, and weird. Weird, cause we can see them, but they can't see us. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so I got to see a few people playing some Fallout, some Bethesda VR stuff. Uh, I didn't see anyone play Doom. I saw some people play Skyrim and some people play Fallout. Uh, they both look exactly how you expect. Uh, expect the thing about the Fallout on. Uh, uh, sorry, Skyrim VR on PlayStation VR that concerns me a little bit is I mm -hmm. didn't see anyone just free moving around. They were using the teleporting thing because there's no oh, analog yeah. sticks on the move controllers. So I'm really hoping that you can just like freely walk around because that's what it looked like from the trailer. But I just mechanically I don't know how you would do it. So um, I'm not sure how they're going to do that just yet. Mm -hmm. But um, I just saw people teleporting around. Um, uh, besides that, they, they look exactly how you expect them to play. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, I hope, I really hope for Skyrim VR, there's an option just to play it with a controller. Like, use the VR headset yeah. and just play it with a controller. Like, giving you that option is always nice, because, like, most controls are cute, and, like, they're fun and immersive for, like, the first 30 minutes, but then you're just <laughs> like, I'm already tired, and this is a 100-hour RPG. Like, yeah. this is not mm-hmm. doable. Also, I again, like, VR is dope, but, I mean, Dramamine wears off after six hours, and, like, sometimes you want to play uh, Skyrim for a little longer than that. Um, mm-hmm. I really hope there is an option to play it without VR. Like, yeah, definitely. The, uh, the, a VR only Skyrim would actually be awful. Like, I've been wanting VR for Skyrim forever, but I want the option. I don't want to have to play the whole thing in it. I just want to play it in VR when I want to play it in VR, and then just like some section, some days, just be like, I just want to play. Mm-hmm. It. You know what I mean? Um. Uh, Bethesda had the best booth of the show, though, uh, for one particular game, and this is why I played Wolfenstein 2. Uh, if Wolfenstein 2 is not why I wanted to play more than anything else, but this booth, I wanted to play this booth more than anything else, they had a diner. They built the diner in the middle of the show floor, and you went in and you played Wolfenstein 2 at this mm-hmm. diner. Uh, like, you went into a booth, like, with a, t- a table with the menus and stuff, and there's a TV screen set up, and you played Wolfenstein 2 in this diner. And they served you strawberry milkshakes. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. It was it was it was really cool. It was a really cool atmosphere. They had like the guy in the back of the diner making the strawberry milkshakes, and they had like good music, and it was good vibes, and like it looked mm-hmm. really good. It looked like this whole thing reminded me of Universal and Disney. Like all these like things are set up like the rides, and like you know with like cool backdrops and stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, there is um there was a giant like esports area where people were playing different things i caught a little bit of quake champions tournament um that was cool um uh that was uh that was most of the cool stuff in uh south hall and west hall i think south mm-hmm. hall had um was smaller but it had two big hitters it had playstation and nintendo uh and the yakuza thing was actually in south hall too um mm-hmm. uh they ha- ign and GameSpot had huge booths i wasn't expecting that um where they just did their live their live cast or whatever, but uh, Nintendo had like the whole thing dedicated to. There were other games to play, but their entire booths like design was dedicated to Mario Odyssey. Uh, like they built New Donk City inside the convention center. Yeah, that's what uh, I heard. Hell yeah, that's and awesome. They had yeah, and they had like um, the top hat ship like also mm-hmm. there, and like a giant Mario and a giant Bowser tank wow. and stuff. Uh, it was really cool. It really did feel like if you've ever been to uh, Universal Orlando and you're walking through the Marvel area and it's like a city, it's mm-hmm. like that, but New Donk City. That's um, awesome. Damn. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, let's see. Oh, and then Sony. Uh, Sony's whole booth wasn't themed to any specific thing, but they had probably the biggest booth of the show and like, like kind of like a... a a theme park like each of their rides each of their like stations for things was themed to its own thing so uh there was now none of these were playable these were all theater demos of a developer playing it but there was monster hunter uh which had like a bunch of grass and trees and stuff there was uncharted uh the lost legacy which had like a cliff and like a whole bunch of uncharted stuff uh days gone which had like this like abandoned farmhouse um, Spider-Man, which had, like, a, a piece of the city and then, like, a helicopter suspended from the ceiling with Spider-Man on top of it. And then there was uh, Detroit, which was actually just, like, a bunch of, like, a, like a sci-fi wall, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the rest of their booth was just, like, kiosks and stuff. There's a big section for Destiny 2, big section for Battlefront 2, and a big section for Battlefield 2, Battlefront mm-hmm. 2. And a big section for uh, Call of Duty. Then they had a big VR section, um, and NAC 2 and Matterfall. And then the rest of their booth was for European media only, and that was to play their new thing, their share link, or their play link initiative, like the stuff that you play from your phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those party games. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was very weird. It was European media only. It was very, like, I, I don't know why specifically that, but huh. um, I, I do know. To me. I do know that is that um, that phone game that they were showing where you take a picture of your friend and then like draw like whatever on them. 
Um, that is supposed yeah. to be PlayStation Plus free game of the one of the free games of the month yes. uh, for next month, starting on the fourth. I don't know. Of July. Yeah. Oh hmm. shit! Cool. I did so, not know it was coming that soon. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm in. Like, if I ever had a group of people over at my apartment, like that's like that sounds like a jolly party game. Um, it's similar to the Jackbox Collection. If you guys are familiar with that, mm-hmm. um, which yep. is just also a bunch of little fun. Yeah, it, it kind of uh, it kind of confused me when it said the fourth. I didn't look at what day the fourth falls on, but uh, I was like, why? Yeah, I was like, but why was it? Why was that singled out? None of the other games were singled out saying, like, only, it, you know, it's only showing up the 4th, like, after the 4th. And I was like, why is this game being singled out and the other two games that are free for PS4, you know, not? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just weird little thing that I never figured out. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. And then lastly, but, yeah. the last really cool thing, and I, again, I didn't get to play this because, like, the line was too long. But I think it was like it was some kind of third-party controller manufacturer. Um, like you, they, you, there was like three games to play. Like one was like a Nintendo game, one was some other one was a Microsoft game, I think. Mm-hmm. And you, you could have played these games at a different booth. But the reason you played it there was because they wanted to use they wanted you to use their third-party controller when you played it. But their catch was you played it in a giant ball pit. Like you were like submerged into like. A ball pit, and you played it while you were in a ball pit. <laughs> that's really, it's super silly, that's really random. But like, it seemed like people were having fun. Uh, cool. I, w- I wish I wish I could have partake, but I was, uh, you know, tired. I only had so much time. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first two days, I mostly just walked around and played some things that had a really short line because there was a few things that didn't have a line. Um, and then the third day, I dedicated to Wolfenstein Two, so I can just quickly go through like what I played because it's not much. Um, sure. I played Final Fantasy XII uh, remake because um, cool. uh, there was no line. I was actually walking by the kiosk. The Square Enix booth was overall pretty boring, but I was just walking by the kiosk and someone handed me the controller, and I'm just like, "Hey, okay, I guess I'm playing this." Uh, it looks great, and uh, it 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 looks really good. Like they did a really good job for remaster, but I mean, it's the same game that you uh, you know if you like Final Fantasy XII, you know, play this mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. Um, I know they added um, the stuff that America didn't get the first time around. Like, yeah, like uh, the Japanese... Uh, like the Zodiac... Um, I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's like a, like you actually have like a job system. Whereas mm-hmm. the first time I played it in PS2 did not have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They added a lot mechanically. I didn't really get to mess around with any of that. Uh, this was a pretty free roam... Um, this is a pretty free roam thing. You were just kind of in the forest section. You could just kind of like walk around and fight things. So mm-hmm. um, I didn't really get to mess around with like switching jobs or anything. Like right. That. Um, uh, next, I went over to the Indiecade because there were some short lines at the Indiecade, and I played uh, this game called Steinfield um, by uh, Gaddick Games. Um, mm-hmm. It was I have seen like eight different games like this though. Like, I don't know who came up with the concept first, but it's, uh, and also you've probably seen like a five of these at Full Sail alone, uh, mm-hmm. where uh, it's black and, like, everything's black, and you make sound, when you make a sound, like, kind of lights up, like, the uh, the wireframe of things, or, like, the outline. Oh, stuff. yeah, it's basically, but, um, I don't know, like, Beyond Dies, Unfinished Swan. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Oh, okay, like, yeah. You, I know but what you mean it's, it's a horror game, so like the more sound you make, the more you attract the monster to you. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, cool. you probably heard, you probably heard about that. And we're not even talking about the same game. Like they, that's possible. This concept has been used so many times. I saw a demonstration for almost this exact same thing at uh, in Orlando from a different team coming out of uh, the Dave School uh, mm-hmm. at um, uh, what was that monthly thing in Orlando? Was it Indie Nomicon? Indie Yep. yep. Is that the monthly thing? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw a presentation for that at the, from a team from the Dave School at Indianomicon, like right before I left. Mm-hmm. So, like, this concept is is not super original. Um, that being said, it's a cool, cool concept. Mm-hmm. Um, and what makes this one especially interesting was it was in VR. So, um, I played it off of, of a PSVR, 
um, on the PlayStation Pro. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, and I didn't get motion sickness for some reason. Like I always get motion sickness. I always have to take Dramamine. Yeah. I just didn't. So I didn't know if like maybe because there's not enough visual stimulation, like to really confuse my brain. Um, or if I just hmm. didn't play for long enough, but like, yeah, I was playing this game. I didn't get queasy or anything. And, uh, it was, it was fun. Uh, it is a horror game. Um, I don't really get scared from horror games, so I don't want to speak on if it was scary or not. Right. But, um, uh, it was. It's definitely one to look out for. I believe it's coming out this year. Uh, I played uh, Frog Fractions two. Do you guys know about Frog Fractions two? It, Frog well, Fractions one. I know about it. No. Yeah, it seems like an Austin kind of game. Like the whole, the whole <laughs> behind it. Yeah. Uh, well, it's one of the things so, that like I know all about it, but it's just not something like I want to actually interact with. I just love that it lives. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I feel that. Um, the section of the game I played, you were shaving Obama's face before a debate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, just... <laughs> I'm on board. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah. It was super weird. It was super weird. And I know the whole game's not like that either. And then there's that sentence just throughout the game. Um, it was cool. The developers seemed real nice. Um, and then uh, uh, I played one more thing at Indicade. Um, I played two more things at Indicade, and I don't, I don't want to be mean to anything. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to say too much about these. Uh, I'm just going to say they need work. Uh, okay. One of them was, uh, and I feel so bad about this one. I almost feel like I shouldn't even mention this. No, I'll mention it because, like, these guys, like, give these guys some press. It was called The Big Journey, and it was mm-hmm. by, like, some South American team. I'm not quite sure. It's a really small team of, like, three people. And, like, it's what they were trying to do is really ambitious for the size team they have. It's like a 3D story adventure game. And, mm-hmm. like, they've been working on it for years and like they couldn't even give me a release date they were like it'll take us like like five more years to finish this and like it's just like it's in a rough state and e3 was not the best place to play it just because it was like story driven they didn't have headphones and like Mm -hmm. you didn't hear what was going on um do you uh do you remember the name of the company I don't. Um, I have a sure. business card around here somewhere. Okay. Um, well, see if you can send that to me, and I'll put it in the um, description. Okay, yeah. cool. But, like, I mean, for anyone listening, like, the big journey is in a rough state, but, like, there is love being put into this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys really care about the, the story they're making. It has to do with, like, their culture. Like, it's a story about, like, their folklore and, like, the, the things of their of their people and stuff. Yeah. And so it's... It's a really cool game. If they can pull it together, it'd be like a really like a really sweet like indie type thing. But it's it's got a long ways to go. The models look rough. The animations are rough. Mm-hmm. There's bugs. Like mm-hmm. it's got it's got it's got some time in the oven. Uh, the next one was Indie Assault, which is coming out pretty soon, and it's the Smash Brothers s game. But they've like licensed out uh, characters from other indie games. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, well, there are so many Smash Brothers s games out there right now. And it's, uh, this one is very unpolished, I think. Um, if you are in for, like, the care, I didn't recognize any of the characters. Mm -hmm. If you're in on the characters they're using, then, like, that's what's going to sell this game. But, uh, they have a few months left to polish it off, and, like, it needs a lot of work. A lot of the animations don't read. Uh, everything's really floaty. Um, like, a lot of things don't feel like they have any weight to them. It's kind of a little... Everyone's Kirby. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but like, yeah. So it's um, uh, your your moves just aren't aren't very like defined. Like mm-hmm. they're just like it looks like it's in beta form. Um, well, so they might be. Form. It looks like it's look like it looks like it's in alpha, and I feel like it's supposed to be in beta. Um, yeah, they might be getting ready to do like an early access or something, which is usually beta stage, but sometimes it's earlier. Yeah, I hope so. Um, it's coming out on PlayStation Four. Um, mm-hmm. So usually that doesn't imply there's going to be an early access stage, but I mean, yeah. we'll see again. Like, I mean, I actually knew one of the animators. I went to school with him um, and stuff and like they're a small team and like, you know, they're working hard on it, but like there's so many Smash Brothers S games that it's going to take, it's going to take some yeah. time to like make this stand out. Um, so uh, again, I want to be mean to anything, but I'm also, I just want to be honest with stuff too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you know, looking at it from their point of view, you know, you not just bashing the title, I think is, you know, you're going, you're not going out of your way to bash the title and possibly giving them con- some construct, some feedback, you know, some constructive yeah. criticism Something is a good thing if they, 
you know, happen to see it. Mm-hmm. Something I need to get better at is giving people criticism to their face. Like, uh, <laughs> a lot of these people, I could have given them advice, like, after I played the game, but I didn't want to be, like, that pretentious asshole who just comes up <laughs> and just tells them everything they did wrong. Yeah, you're but, like, oh, wow, this is the best game I've ever played to every person you see. Well, you just kind of load it up. But... You load it up. You, you compliment. It, it's called a compliment sandwich. Uh-huh. Okay. Hit them with hit them with something good. Tell them where they're terrible, and then hit them with something good again. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. Next E three uh, indie guys, guys will be better at giving you guys advice. Like, um, I told them their animations needed improving. I told them their animations don't read very well, and like it's kind of hard to tell like what moves I'm doing. That's uh, good. I could have gone way farther down the rabbit hole of stuff, but uh, <laughs> you know, I I at least gave them that. Um. So yeah, I just you gotta get better at uh, the art. The art of like. Uh, criticizing about insulting. Um, so, uh, then, uh, I think it's all good vibes from here on out, though. Um, I played... Oh, well, one, one more kind of downer. Uh, mm-hmm. I played... I was really excited to play Dissidia NT. The line was only an hour, so I played that. Um, I'm still in on this game just because of, like, like I was saying before, like, whenever there's, like, an ensemble fighter, like, the draw is, like, how much you like these characters. Like, mm-hmm. I yeah. happen to just really fucking love Final Fantasy. So, like, I'm buying the city and team no matter what. But, uh, yeah, um, I didn't really like the, I played the original on the PSP, never really liked it, just because, like, I don't know, like, everything just, it never felt like I had control over what I was doing. Like, maybe I just never got good, but, like, it felt like the, the bar to get good was just, like, not there. I agree, like, it just... Everything just feels clumsy. Yeah, it, it felt really like you were just stumbling into what you were doing. Mm-hmm. You weren't really, like, you didn't have that control. Yeah, it doesn't, really, like, it's not abundantly clear how to do combos you just kind of do one attack and they all feel like uh, like separated from each other i don't even see how one would chain into the other um it to see the nt feels exactly like that they fixed they changed nothing as far as i can tell uh mm-hmm. except now they're like three on three fights uh i got destroyed and i don't know if that's because i didn't know what i was doing or the people i was playing with really knew what they were doing <laughs> but um i i the match was short I got destroyed. I didn't really even understand how to play before I like that it was over. So like, I want to chalk a little bit up to it to me, just like not like knowing how to play this game. But um, yeah, um, I I'm just gonna say though, like it feels very much like the Art of games. If you didn't like the Art of games, NT's probably not gonna change your mind. Yeah, uh, but this one's gonna have a huge character roster. I got to play as Vaughn from Final Fantasy XII. Um, oh yeah. So cool. Uh yeah, then I think all good vibes from here on out. Um, I played uh Knack two. <laughs> redemption knack to the redemption um <laughs> knack to origins yeah uh no knack to sweet i like knack one it just like had an abundant amount of problems like it was just like it yeah. was good but they never like no it wasn't good it was it was great <laughs> concepts that they never like capitalized on like yeah. it was like yeah. the platforming's okay but they never pushed it like the combat was super rudimentary they never really did much with it this one like they're fixing that like so the platforming is like a little bit more like it's a little bit more intricate now combat is super good like combat they have like combos and stuff if you're playing Mm -hmm. co-op there's a lot of co-op moves i will say though i think co-op takes away from the platforming because there's like almost no consequence to fucking up if you're in co-op because you can just as long as one of you makes a jump you can just teleport to your partner Mm -hmm. so i think uh co-op makes the combat better but it makes platforming worse but the combat's still good if you play single player. I just don't think the platforming's good enough. So hmm. I would recommend playing this game single player first time through, then co-op like your second round through. Um, but yeah, there's like you can like shrink back to your original size now, and then like shrink back up, like and then like accumulate all your pieces again. And so um, sometimes it'll be big, and there's like a path that you can take if you're small that you might miss. So like. It's, like, good to, like, keep be aware of your environment and stuff. Because uh, mm-hmm. those small paths might lead to secrets and, like, upgrades and stuff. So, I'm in on that, too. Um, okay. I got to play Matterfall. Matterfall is my game of the show. Not because it was definitively the best game on the show floor. That's probably Mario Odyssey. But it's the best game that I got to play. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Matterfall's dope. It's by the people who made Resogun and uh, Sardust HD, and Dead Nation, and also Next Machina, which also just came out, but for some reason wasn't playable on the show floor. Um, okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, but Matterfall is side-scroller, but it's still a twin-stick shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So, but like everything is done in the triggers. Uh, so, like R1 jumps, L1 dashes, uh, R2, and then holding down the triggers changes the kind of beam that you have. So, if you, you move with the left analog stick and you shoot with the right analog stick. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if you're shooting um, and then you hold down one of the triggers, uh, it switches to a matter beam, and that like uh, enables you to like form uh, like the platforms in the air. Like it, it's it's specific. You can't form platform anywhere, but there are platforms that you can like form, and then you have to dash your way through them to kind of like break through. And then when you land, it's solid. And mm -hmm. then if you hold down the other one, you fire grenades. And so it's switching between your three ammo types: normal, matter beam, and grenades, and also just like precision platforming and stuff. It feels super good. And was, I can tell, like, there's a cool difficulty curve because I, I was having fun with it, but it was kind of bad. But I could tell, like, once I would get better, like, it would become exponentially more fun. Like, it was still fun, but, like, the possibilities of what I could be doing if I was good at the game, like, are immediately apparent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, nice. Matterfall, come yeah. out in, like, August. Like, for sure, check that one out. Like, I think that's, if you like, like, 2D action side-scrolling games like that, like, it's for, definitely for you. It's not a Metroid S game, like they are linear levels, but like that seems fine for just how like kinetic and chaotic like the action is. Mm -hmm. uh, like I wouldn't want this game to be free roaming. That would just be too much. Um, so uh, this is next to you, Matterfall is CNT. Um, then uh, oh, uh, there was this thing called Dome Three Hundred and Sixty. This is just for like super rich people. <laughs> um, like it's literally a giant dome that you set up and like so here's the thing here's all three things you need to like have a dome 360 set up you need enough room in your giant fucking house to have a doom a dome 360 set up it's like the size of a room it's massive secondly you need to have three um, a 360 camera that you can just record your like extravagant trips to like new zealand with Jesus. uh and then, like, yeah, and then you just, like, the budget to buy a Dome 360, which I don't even know how much they were. But, yeah, you go in, and then you can just watch your 360 videos in a giant dome. Um, and you can play, like, there's, like, a Vive application where you can, like, draw in 360 and stuff. It's mm -hmm. pretty cool, but, um, like, yeah, uh, it's, you know, just, like, who has the money for that, man? Um, yeah. So, there was that. Um, then there was... Uh, um, then uh, Wolfenstein 2, which was the last thing I played, uh, but I'll talk about now. Uh, it's you were in a wheelchair the whole time, um, which was bold. Um, and it does show that like this game is like gonna have new things that the other one didn't. But I mean, mm -hmm. if you take out the wheelchair aspect, it was basically a level from the first game. Like, there's really not a whole lot other things like differentiate uh, Wolfenstein 2 from the sequel based on the demo I played. So I would say, like, if you are down with Wolfenstein, the New Order, you're down with the New Colossus. Mm -hmm. if you didn't yeah. like the New Order, this one's not going to change your mind. That was okay, pretty so much what I, uh, w like, what I said after we, after I watched the press conference. I was like, it doesn't look like a lot changed. Uh, mm -hmm. But that being said, it looks badass. It looks really yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and also, like, Wolfenstein always had like this weird fog to me. Did you guys get that impression? Like, for some reason, everything just looks cloudy in that game. Yeah, I kind of had that not feeling. Like, textures, but like the, there's a filter over everything that makes everything either seem like washed out or cloudy. Uh, it, it seemed like there was like a really weird, um, like maybe it was a draw distance thing. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Well, that's still I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Everything, everything still looks like there's like a fog going on. Huh. Yeah, like an engine setting or something that was. Like it probably is just a filter or something. But, yeah. Or a yeah, uh, shader, I mean. Yeah, it's just like it's washed out. Like, I don't know. I hope you can kind of mess with that a little bit because that always bothered me in the first one. Mm. Um, You'll have to get it on PC. <laughs> uh, then um, I played on PC, actually. Uh, but okay. they gave me an Xbox One controller. But obviously I wasn't allowed to change settings or anything. Um, then... Let's see if I played anything else. Oh, yeah, and then I played uh, a one PlayStation VR title. I got to play uh, The Inpatient. Oh. Oh. By Super That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to hear about that. Do you guys like Until Dawn? Very Hell awesome. yeah. Cool. This is set in the Until Dawn universe. Yeah. Um, yep. Remember when you were uh, 
Johnny McJockface? I don't remember his name. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What was I his name? I him by the end, but uh, Mike? he's the one. I... Yep. Mike, maybe. You, like, lost a finger or lost a hand, depending on, like, if you fucked up with him or something. Yeah. And uh, I, uh-huh. yeah, I think he lost a finger. Or a life. And he, he was exploring <laughs> a, an did. abandoned sanatorium. Yeah. yeah. At some point. The black. You, this game takes boy. place in that sanatorium in the 30s. Yeah. Yeah. When it was going. It's like Black I, Woods or something like that. Yeah, I believe I, I threw up an article on uh, mm-hmm. our Facebook about them merging the universe. Well, not merging the universe, but expanding the universe into this into this title, which is awesome, awesome. because yeah. uh, you know a lot I of people, that. a lot of people I know, and you know a lot of people on that read some of our stuff seem to be pretty interested in mm-hmm. not just horror titles and story driven titles, but Untold on specifically. So. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm super in with it. And like this, this was a cool demo. Uh, it was, it wasn't, it was long, but it wasn't too long. Uh, mm-hmm. it really like, it got you in the vibe and like in the vibe of, of this world. It is by far the best looking VR game I've ever played. Like I've ever seen. And hmm. I've used nice. Oculus Vive and, uh, PSVR. Granted, I haven't played like the top tier things on any of those. Well, I've talked to you on, on Oculus and Vive. Like I'm sure I haven't, I'm sure there are better games out there than what I have played. But mm-hmm. out of what I have played, and I don't know, this is running on PS4 Pro, I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but mm-hmm. just like, the detail in the models was crazy. Like, it looks like that trailer. We, like, it, wow. if you play Resident Evil 7, nice. it does not look as good as Resident Evil 7 out, like, trailers. Yeah. Like, there, there is a performance hit. This game, it looks exactly like what you saw in that press conference. Um, it That's looks awesome. good. And so uh, you start off and you're like you're strapped to this chair, and the doctor comes up, and he's just like, um, he's like uh, asking you questions about like trying to make you remember and like giving you mm-hmm. inject- injections and things, and you can choose to either be like down with it or like really hesitant. And I kind of like change my mind back and forth a little bit just so I can see like how he reacts differently. Yeah. Um, Dude always stays calm, always menacing. Like, he does definitely have a separate reaction from when you're about it to when you're not. Mm-hmm. But, like, dude is creepy. He's a very Hugo Strange-looking dude. And, okay. um, like, the first right. time you remember something, uh, you're in a closet, and you're looking around the closet and stuff, and this guy is, like, looking for you. And then he opens the door, and he shines a light, but the dude has no face. And mm. so you you come back into it, and he's like, okay, now what do you remember? And you can say, why didn't he have a face? Or you can, or you can say, I think there was a calendar there, and I didn't notice there was a calendar, and so I chose <laughs> naturally. Um, uh, why does the dude have no face? And he's like, that's ridiculous. People have faces, and so he's like, let's try and remember again. And so it goes back again. <laughs> Sorry, that's great. Of course, like people have faces. What's wrong with you? Uh, this dude and, didn't have faces. So it's just, and like uh, you're shut gonna, up. and like you're gonna look at the calendar. The dude doesn't have a fucking face. Like there's yeah. an obvious yeah. draw here. Yeah, that's for the second or third time you play through. If you want to be a dick about well, it. Well, it sends you back to that same scenario again. And this time I looked for the calendar and I made note of the date. It never really brought it up again, but I'm wondering if that's going to be like a puzzle mechanic to this. Yeah, I bet like, that'll that would be. be the, that's the awesome. Yeah. But it's like they're giving you this crazy shit and then it's like, oh, but keep aware of what's going on or you're like done so. Yeah. And maybe that's like cool. there's if you pay really close attention to your environment, I'm hoping that like that opens up some dialogue choices that you might not necessarily have that affects how the game like progresses mm-hmm. and changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's cool. So you so played this I on, guess, uh, you say PSVR? Yeah, with a PlayStation 4 Pro. Yep, it's only PSVR. It's a, yeah, it's yeah, only yeah. PSVR. It's PSVR. Okay. I, I didn't know if they had like a like a build that they were running off their off of the computer or you know what the deal was. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, no, it was running on PS4 Pro and it was uh, it was with a PSVR. I played with a DualShock controller. Uh, as far as I know, there's no motion control, which is fine. For me. So yeah, I mean, expected to look, you know, as you know, as awesome as you're saying. There wasn't no like, oh, this was running on a PC, so it could be, you know, slightly downgrade in quality or something like that. When no, yeah, when no, it comes out, that hardware. that's good. That's good. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, still running a small demo. Like maybe like the full game won't be able to look that good, but I actually think they are going to hit the quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there hasn't so, been a ton to get, and I don't know about you guys. It, like, I don't believe FilterCord has uh, any uh, any sort of VR. I know I don't. I'm not sure no. about you, Drake, but there just hasn't been something that's you know called out to me mm-hmm. yet. Resident Evil Seven is the VR is the only way to play that game. <laughs> um, 
That's what I've heard, a, actually. It's a religious experience playing that game in VR. Resident uh, Evil 7? Like you, yes, you can play without it. I would strongly recommend not doing that. Like, play that yeah. game in VR. I platinumed it without it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. It's super crazy, man. Like, it really gets to you in that space. And, like, I like I said, like, I don't really get scared from horror games. I'm playing Evil Finn right, right. now, and, like, it's Evil Finn is goofy, I think. Like, I'm not like, yeah. thinking that game is scary. But Resident Evil 7, there was a few sections in there without, because I was living it, man. And I was just like, yeah. it was, I'll tell you the scariest part of that game for me, actually, was when I was walking through um, to get to the, the little kid's room. And I was oh yeah through like nothing yep. even happened well i don't want to say that because it's like spoilers but like that's not the craziest part of that game combat wise but it was the scariest part just because of like how much they set the mood with like that vr headset mm-hmm. um yeah like that was to me like the thing like i have to have a psvr to play this um and so like i just want more things like that and this kind of seems like it will be like this um it got creepy so like then you walked around to your room a little bit and again, like, I didn't get motion sickness, so I don't know if it was just something with the game where I wasn't playing long enough to get motion sickness. But mm-hmm. uh, controls felt a little wonky. Uh, turning felt a little weird in that. I hope they, like, iron that out. Like, okay. Resident Evil 7 just controls perfectly. Um, this one, like, it felt, like, a little strange to, like, turn my body um, and, uh, and stuff. Like, I kept wanting to use the analog stick to turn. But, like, that didn't pivot me very much. I have to, like, look in that direction and then, like, press forward and then, like, the character would turn. Just, like, make it regular first-person shooter controls. Like, it's fine. Like, the VR is literally should just be my head. It shouldn't be how I'm moving my body. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I explored my room a little bit. Um, there's, like, items you can pick up that trigger flashbacks. And then, like, the orderly is, like, moving you down a hallway. And then, um, like, sh- like, stuff starts falling apart and, like, monsters start appearing on the like shadows of monsters start appearing on the wall and then like you fall through the floor and like that's where the demo ends so wow uh definitely gonna be like some awesome. weird psychological stuff like you play a crazy person mm-hmm. so yeah um, I th- i'm really into that yeah yeah that, it i mean that, that one definitely caught my eye well while it was while we were going through all of the stuff for e3 um and i, I don't know like that, that could be that could be the nail in the coffin for me to uh, entice yeah, me to man, pick I up that so. PSVR. Because the cool thing is, like, there's so there's not a whole lot of killer apps for the PSVR, like, mm-hmm. the things that you would buy the PSVR for. But, once you already have one, there's actually a lot of stuff that you should get. Like, there's a, a lot of, like, I would never say buy a PSVR for this, but if you have one, definitely pick this up. Like, right. Here, uh, the game Here They Lie is really dope. It's like, um, a like I don't know if you've heard about it. It's a it's an indie game that came out. I think it might have been actually published by Sony. I'm not sure. I think it was an indie game published by Sony for PSVR. It's like a weird art house film. Like I thought it was a mm-hmm. horror game, and like the first act is, and then after that, it's just like this weird art house thing where people are wearing animal masks and it's like making like commentary on society and sexual. What was they called? Stuff. Here they lie. Here they lie. It's trippy, but it's so good. Like it's so interesting. Um. Uh, and like, but I would never tell anyone buy a PSVR for Here They Lie. But if you have one, absolutely pick that up. Um, there's a lot of games like that where it's like there there are cool apps for it. Um, but you know, not very many system sellers. Um, so so that was all I got to play PSVR. Sony does it real well. Like you make appointments to do their stuff on their app, but you that means you can also only do a few things a day because you can only make so many appointments. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how like I was able to do like a few things at Sony's booth was Knack and Matterfall like there's just not really a line for it, so I got to play those. But yeah. the PSVR like you just make an appointment, it's super simple. And then I made an appointment to watch the Spider Man theater demo and a Days Gone theater demo. Uh, these are largely the same demo that you saw in the press conference, so I don't mm-hmm. want to spend too much time on it. But I'll just tell you like what they showed that was different. Uh, Spider Man, uh, exact same thing except like. Uh, the demo as they showed in the press conference kind of made it look very like Arkhamy. Uh In the theater demo, uh, it felt a lot less like Arkham games. It felt a lot more organic. Like he was jumping off the buildings and then like web slinging around and like going up to like different floors and crashing through them to like and like just changing up the the the, the combat mechanics and just by like literally just by using the web to like reposition himself on this building. Um, yeah. It also doesn't seem like you need to be sneaky at all. You can just do combat if you want, so you don't have to play it like the Arkham games, from yeah. what I could tell. 
Um, besides that, it was largely the same. Uh, then uh, Days Gone uh, mm-hmm. looks super good to me. Um, yeah, I'm I agree. I'm most excited for Days Gone coming out of the show. Because what they showed in the theater demo was the same level, like the same scenario, played completely differently. So this time it was daytime and it was snowing. And the uh, the freakers and the uh, just regular like bandit NPCs and stuff, uh, they react different based on the weather and based on the time of day. Oh wow! They have different habits and stuff. Yeah. Uh, freakers are mostly asleep during the day actually, and they come out at night. And then they're like ferocious at night. <laughs> and then uh, the people and like I don't remember how the weather affected it, but the fact that it was snowing also affects their behavior and stuff. Um, but like these things are like they have they have a living ecosystem so they they are creatures that need to survive so they congregate around like lakes and watering holes because they're not like zombies they don't feed on brains or whatever they actually feed on like they're just animals so like they have to go to the water to drink they have to hunt for food and stuff so like they congregate around like packs of animals and water and stuff and they're also Mm -hmm. like you know humans are also just food to them so like they um they can go right. They, they also attack bandit camps and stuff like that too. But they travel in herds. They have a caste, like a caste system. Like they have like non organized oh, cool. society, but they have a hierarchy to the way that they work. Yeah, Not kind of all, like how uh, leader. Yeah, like kind of how like um wolves pack up. Yes, yes. That's so awesome. Really wolves work actually. Um, and so uh, this time, like since you know that the tripwire is coming. He went around uh, and like, went to the back of them and then, like, took them out from behind uh, and then just, like, cut down the tripwire instead of, like, getting hit by it. Then he uh, he went through and he still set up the bear trap, but um, he waited this time. And if you wait long enough, like, the, um, the guy, he has his foot in the bear trap and he's, like, freaking out. And he's, like, help me get out. And they're, like, stop screaming. You're going to attract them. And he's, like, what do you mean stop screaming? My foot's in the bear trap. And one of them just shoots him. They just kill him because oh, he's shit. making too much noise. And, like, that's the gunshot that you heard in the E3 demo that tracks oh, that wow. freakers was that gunshot. So, um, like, other things besides just you can affect the world and, like, draw packs of stuff. Like, these NPCs did this all on their own. Like, yes, you set the bear trap, but, like, they have their own interactions and stuff despite you. And, like, you don't even have to be there. Like, he had moved on, and, like, what they're going to do is still going to happen. Um, and so then he, like, took them out, like, stealthily, like, from behind, like, while they were distracted of arguing about whether or not they should have shot the guy. Uh, you can take them out and move on. And then he got into, like, a full, like, uh, instead of, in the, at the actual base of that tree fort thing, uh, (laughs) instead of attracting the freakers to kill them off, he actually just got into a gunfight so he could show off, like, the third-person gun gun mechanics. Um, it looks good. It looks fine. Um, it looks like how you expect a kind of looks like Uncharted, like how you expect a third person shooter to work. Okay. Um, I didn't really see him take cover too much, so I'm hoping it doesn't rely too much on cover. I hope it's yeah. more organic than that. Uh, oh, and then one other thing, like as he was making his way, uh, there was a freaker chain to a tree, and a guy was like taunting it, and so you shoot the uh, the chain off the tree, and then the freaker just attacks the guy. <laughs> That's um, cool. And stuff. So and then you could sneak up behind and like, you know, kill the freaker. Um, and then the demo ended in the same place. We still didn't get to see the uh, the bear fight, but uh, right. yeah, Days Gone looks super cool. Like they have some really ambitious ideas for this game. Mm-hmm. Um, game looked good too. The game looks done. Like obviously, yeah, uh, probably have way more to do because we don't even have a release date for this. But like the game looks polished. Like from what they showed, like it looks it looks ready to go. Same thing with Spider Man. Like both of those games like look ready to go. Um, so I don't, uh, I don't, I don't have any doubts about the quality. Interesting. So. Yeah, they might just be giving themselves that extra bit of time to, you know, yeah, test I mean, bugs, like, all that fun stuff, you know, yeah. that you do at the end of your production cycle. Let it cook. Yeah. Um. I I don't know if it fits into this podcast, but one day I just like I'd like to have a discussion about like the art of releasing a game. Like obviously mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. of that's a little bit out of your control. Like the game is ready when it's ready, but like I, they do kind of try and schedule these to like make sure that their games don't all come out too close to each other. Like, they need to make sure that, like, each year has its game. And mm-hmm. even, like, the, the seasons and quarters within that year are, like, equally weighted out. Like, this year, like, 
Sony's biggest game was probably Horizon. That came out in March, you know, and like for fall, yeah. like probably I think like GT Sport and like they're relying a lot on like their uh, their third party partners. Like, you know, to them, Destiny 2, Battlefront 2 and uh, Call of Duty are like Sony games so in Sony's eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, so like just staggering the way that they release things. And then again, God of War is going to probably come out in March. Um Shadow of the Colossus is probably coming out in spring, like probably like June or something. And then, uh, you know, Spider Man's probably is, I think, going to be next year too. Like, when's that going to come out? It's just like kind of like how they order their releases is really interesting. Um, and the fact that they don't like super care about having a huge game in fall anymore. Uh, like, their big fall game this year is probably going to be GT Sport, which, you know, GT doesn't have the same like power that it did back in the day. So, yeah, like, no doubt. Like yeah. their big game was Horizon, and they were fine with that being a spring game. And I think that's interesting because I think a lot of developers are still afraid to release big things outside of the fall. Um, and yeah, they send, ends up fucking them because like the fall is so crowded. So yeah, I don't know, what Definitely. do you guys think about that? Um, yeah, you know, I I think uh, I mean, there's there's a couple games that came out this year. I think that kind of proved that your release window doesn't really matter if you have a really good game. Right. Um, specifically, you know, Horizon, I think, was a good example of that. Um, you know, Persona earlier in the year. Um, Prey. Legend of Zelda, the Switch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prey. Yeah, Prey just kind of dropped in, like, what, like, mid, early mid-May mm-hmm. yeah. to not a ton of attention. So maybe, you know, that was kind of a weak point. But we've kind of talked before about how Bethesda's not super good at marketing their, you know, upcoming games. Yeah. Other than their, you know, their E3 presence is usually really good. Yeah, but, um, yeah that's that's also a good point, though. I completely forgot that, yeah, Switch just came out in March. Like, consoles yeah. do not come out in the March. They come out in, like, fall. Right. Like, Nintendo is, By fall, they'll they're... actually have a few units to sell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, when... I mean, I picked mine up, and I stopped at a mom-and-pop shop to see if they were going to be doing pre-orders. And by the mm-hmm. time I got to the store that I was, you know, pre-ordering my system at, I think I got, like, one of the last five that wow. they had in their allotment. And I did that at 10 a.m. It was op- I got there at 10 a.m. It was open for maybe an hour uh, after the announcement that happened the night before. I think after said store had closed. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm all for it. Like when they they're like, you know, we're going to be doing an earlier in the year release for the for the system, and you know, this is what's coming with it. Sure. It wasn't a lot, but I was like, I want to support that. Like, let's get out of the fall. Let's Mm -hmm. prove that making, you know, a a game or even releasing a system outside of that, that window is, is okay. You're going to make money on it. It'll be fine. And then you remember, um, then you can get that money later from, you know, the moms coming into, you know, whatever store. Oh, my kid wants this game. I mean, that's right. For me, that's why, like after, you know, working at GameStop and, uh, you know, realizing, I mean, that's why they do it is because they also get the, they get more random sale in the fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you remember when the Wii U came out? Yeah. Oh, man. Wait, yep. Wait. Like, was it a weird part of the year too? Or did it come out in the fall? Oh, uh, I, I mean, I don't remember exactly when it came out. I was speaking okay. more of the midnight release for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure theirs was weird too, because Nintendo also likes to create that, um, I don't think it was a weird. Um, and I, I no, that was that was standard. That was uh, it was launched uh, in November. Okay, because uh, like Nintendo likes to manufacture these like shortages, mm-hmm. which is like oh, like how I mean, they I, fake I, their shortages or whatever. Like they they don't fake it, but it's like we only. Well, it's real, but yeah, they could. They do it, it themselves, they, right? They, they just are like, well, let's see how this does. Right. I think it's just because they're a very conservative company mm-hmm. in, uh, you know, their business practices. Yeah, um, I mean, don't want to make more than like, you. Yeah, you which they did with the Wii U. The Wii U, yeah. Yeah, so, so they kind of got in sense. trouble there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Like, um, you know, for me, like, a game's release date uh, essentially, like, doesn't even, it's not even an issue to me. I don't even think about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. You know, it's... I understand the, like, you have to market to moms, basically. You have to market so that, you know, mom or dad can stop in at the store after work and pick up a game to give to their kid on Christmas or whatever. And, you know, it really is, I think, the whole holiday scheme and, like, the, you know, 
beginning of the year so they can get your Christmas money. Um, that is kind of centered on kids. And it's like, you don't necessarily have to have every M-rated game come out on November 15th. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, yeah. most people can just go get... I, I think the majority of gamers can just go grab the game they want whenever. Well, we're kind of at a... Like like a delicate a delicate state when it comes to that because that it, it's marketed that way because it's always been marketed that way video games uh-huh. I, I'm doing quotes right now are for kids right so right. when we were when we were younger video games were for kids you know it mm-hmm. wasn't that there weren't adults usually sitting around playing you know whatever ridiculous like they weren't playing Castlevania they weren't playing you know Turtles in Time and stuff like that. Um, it was all marketed for kids, but that audience has now grown up, mm-hmm. and the industry really hasn't realized that. <clears throat> They're still marketing it, the whole thing for kids rather than marketing right. it for the adults who grew up playing it, which is their pretty much their audience in the first place. But they just it's still in their mind. It's still just for kids. Yeah, and it's um, you know, the more you spread it out, like this November. Each oh boy. Tuesday is like a huge game. And then I'm sure there's going to be a few that come out on a weird day of their own. There like, are there, there are like three coming out the same day, right, that are pretty big. Um, well, that, and then I there's going to be some good movies coming out, too. I think it's I think it's Super Mario Odyssey, Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed, mm-hmm. and one other thing is all coming out the exact same day. Yeah. It's not I, South oh Park, is it? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, and... I, I thought they were throwing Far Cry into that tube, and then I heard that was coming out in February, and I was like, oh, thank mm-hmm. you. Oh, thank Smart. you. Yeah, it's, it's a good move. It's definitely yeah. a good move. Because, um, yeah, I think you really fuck yourself by coming out on Call of Duty Day. Like, it doesn't really matter what your game is. It, you know, if you're, yeah. if you're Battlefield, then you're really shooting yourself. But otherwise, it's like, even, um, like, I think that November 10th is going to be the day for a lot of the, like, yearlies to come out. And that's also when Shadows of War is coming out. Oh, yeah. So it's like, I'm clearly and, just going to get that and fuck and, everything else. And South Park's right around there. I think Shadow of War is going to get buried. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and like, it probably should be, well, you know, depending on how everything else does, it probably should be in talks for Game of the Year. And certainly the first game was. And this one looks way better than the first game. I'm actually playing yeah, it again. Was... And the, 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 contr- the controls, I think it's probably because I played Assassin's Creed Syndicate right yeah. before. It but is. The, the controls just, like, it's not even like they're slightly annoying. They just piss me off for Shadows. <laughs> I'm like, this this is really annoying. But I'll get over it. Yeah, it's 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 definitely got that Assassin's Creed vibe of, like, walk up the wall. And he, like, walks around the wall. And you're like, but the climb the wall. Are and then he, all like, different. sits down and he, like, crouches next to the wall. And you're like, jump. Jump up the wall. And he, yeah. like, teleports to the other side of the map. And you're like, what? How did I get here? Um, I, I, uh, no, but man, like, I, I, I got to agree with you on that one, Austin, though. Like, the Shadow of War, or Shadow of Mordor was in talks for Game of the Year. It was In a bad, bad year. But it was also, yeah, it also came out a bad year. This is, like, the yeah. best year we've ever had, ever. Like, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the Game of the Year contenders right now. Uh, Witcher 3. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, uh, there's Zelda. Yeah. Um, Persona 5. Um... I want Horizon to be in that, but I mean we'll it won't see. be. Not because because oh, of Zelda. Yeah. I think it will be, but it'll be on a low end. Dominated. Mm. Dominated. Yeah, so, it'll be like yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Zelda, Persona Five, Horizon, Resident Evil Seven, uh, and like uh, if you're going by the Keeley Awards, like The Last Guardian, because that was technically like fell out of the awards for last year, so it's in the running for this year. That's those true. Are, okay. Those are your game of the year nominees right now. I don't know. I think um. I think Persona's a little too niche. And this was the biggest Persona game, but Japanese games tend to not really get a lot of love outside of Keeley, anyways. Right. Um, and uh, maybe Kotaku will appreciate but he, the Japanese games. But he is saying just right now. Like, just where we're at currently without, oh, yeah. you know, without coming into considering anything else. nothing yeah. in October. <laughs> then, then by the, you know, yeah, by the time October, like, the year ends, we're going to also have had Nino Kuni, we're going to mm-hmm. have Mario Odyssey, mm-hmm. we're going to have had Possibly Xeno Gears two, but I don't believe that one. That's getting pushed to twenty eighteen. Count on it. Yeah, um, yeah. I think. We're going to be the Evil Within two. I think Wolfenstein two is going to be very good. I don't think it's going to be Game of the Year contender. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be in the same running as Horizon. It's going to be nominated, but no one's really going to look at it, except, like, some smaller publications that are like, oh, this yeah. game was great, and we want to be different. Us. Yeah, and then Us. against all that, I just, I don't even think, I don't even think Shadow Mordor is going to get nominated, or Shadow Wars is going to get nominated for anything. Maybe well, it's, it's uh, yeah, maybe it'll get, it might actually even get lumped in with some of the open world stuff, because they are opening it more. It's still not like a, you know, quote-unquote open world game or whatever. Oh, whoa, I actually, I thought Shadow of, I haven't played Shadow of Mordor, I thought it was open world. Well, I mean, it's zonal. It's, yeah. It's like some well, medium to large, there's two, like, kind of wide zones. And yeah. it's, I mean, the first was... game really was, like, um, and I kind of think this about a lot of stuff that people would say that it's not true, so take that with a grain of salt, but I really think the first one was like sort of a tech demo. Um, okay. The first game existed to set up the Nemesis system. The zones were very bland. There wasn't a lot going on. Um, you know, they, it, and the things, system wasn't very deep. It was just like... ended up like clumped together, you know? Yeah. Like, if there was, if there was like, a, let's say there was like a war chief or something... All of his minions were usually around him. If you ran into him without killing one of his war chiefs, that war chief was always going to be around. Yeah, and, and so, um, so you could kill literally everyone in one spot. You didn't have to go to like five different spots, which I think is what the game wanted you to do. But right. you could just literally go find the war chief, kill all of his people in that one area, and then kill him, and then just be done mm -hmm. with it. Which yeah, and blah. you could actually, like, there were several times where you could just start, like, an Insano fight that lasts mm -hmm. for, like, 45 minutes of that kind of, you know, a mix of, like, early Assassin's Creed and uh, Arkham-style combat where there's a lot of countering. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, like, unleashing a combo kill or whatever. Um, right. And, like, the chiefs or, like, the captains or whatever were just naturally attracted to fights going on. So, like every dude in the whole game would just slowly like funnel towards you as long as you could keep the fight going and you could just wipe out an entire region's <laughs> army. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the second game, I mean, as far as like, you know, story goes, I mean, they're just getting totally insane with it, which I'm cool with. Um, they're kind of doing like the game of Thrones method of like, okay, we're not the books and we can't do the same story as the books. So we're just going to totally do our own thing. Okay. I just, I love that. I mean, yeah. I'm super in on the game. I don't mean to slight the game. I think, the good games are going to get slighted by their like they're not they're not slighted but like they're not going to get their respect because there just happened to be like a couple like amazing yeah. games that came out this right year, which yeah i agree like, with you with that horizon deserves to be game of the year just in a different year like it's just it sucks that like a lot of really good games just happen to come out the same year as like these games are just like 10 out of 10s you know what i mean yeah and again, like it, you're saying they're all coming out like within a month of each other that's, I mean, that's the yeah. standard now, though, isn't it? Like, that's yeah. the way that we're going. Like, yeah. every year we're going to have those. Like, it used to be you get, like, all of these games that are really good, and then you get a colossal hit. And it's a definite, you know, we know this is game of the year. You know this mm -hmm. is game of the year. Um, like, you know, a long, you know, a long time ago. And we're, we've slowly been transitioning into... Okay, this game's game of the year. Like when I played Resident Evil, I was like, "This is my game of the year," and it still is my game of the year so far. Uh -huh. But moving forward, there's going to be like 16 more game of the years. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, like it's not going to stay. Uh, South Park's coming out, and that's yeah. obviously going to take a probably a win for me. So I, I'm already a wash for this year. Don't even ask yeah. me what my game of the year is because it's already probably made up. Yeah. I mean, games are just so good right now, and I mean, I yeah. don't expect any of these to win Game of the Years, but, like, a lot of, like, darlings for me came out this year, like Gravity Rush 2, Yakuza mm -hmm. 0, and Nier Automata, like, mm -hmm. those yeah. are just, like, they speak to me, uh, and, like, those are all great games, just, like, universally well-received, and uh, not gonna get any kind of shine at Game of the Years, there's just, there's too many other bigger, high profile yeah. stuff that's just as good. And that's how Game of the Year, you know, should be, it shouldn't be what... You know, like, I, I mean, if you're doing a collective and you're wondering, you know, what does everyone think, you know, and you take a poll or something, uh, sure, that's going to be, like, what everyone thought. But you personally, when you're talking about your game of the year, like, I don't think it should be restricted by, like, okay, this game did the best. Right. It's, it's really, like, what you think game, like, like, what you think that, like, game did the most for you, you know? And, re mm -hmm. like, right now, Resident Evil did a for me personally, it did a ton for me. I loved playing the pregame stuff. 
um, you know, getting the extra items and then experiencing it. And then still even just talking to you, like, I, I want to play the game again. I platinumed it. I want to play the game again with VR when I get VR. Yeah, so, I absolutely do, man. It's, it's a trip. Um, I also like aiming is a dream in VR. Mm -hmm. Aiming works the, like the best ever uh, because like the reticle is wherever you're looking. And so it's, yeah, like that's not how a gun works, but like that's the way it makes the most sense. Right. VR. First person with a DualShock 4 to work. And yeah, I can't imagine playing a first person shooter now without VR. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it. It's going to be weird going back. That's cool. Interesting. Yeah. That's probably the only way to get more precise than mouse. I mean, if you yeah. get practice in VR, it's like obviously not right away, but yeah. Um, yeah. Also, what's your hype level on Assassin's Creed Origins? Uh, I'm glad you say that. Actually, it's <laughs> it's that's what was uh, that's what's going on on our our stream right now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm like, I've got to be cautious, even though I don't want to be, because like, I mean, Syndicate fixed so many issues. But it still had its it still had problems from like hey let's just jump, like pump these games out like mm -hmm. put it in the machine and clone it and make another one you know mm -hmm. and um, I mean when I got Unity I mean honestly I was able to play for I think I got like three hours in and then I just had like game destroying bugs <laughs> like it, there were times when there was certain areas where I just like fell through the ground forever and it like it yeah. never loaded back in like I restarted my game. I played through again, and it happened earlier. Like, uh, it was, like, the only time I was ever able to, like, take back a game and be like, look, it's working. It's just what is working. Like, the core game is defective. Like, it's I, not playable. I really like yeah. in our – it was in one of our previous podcasts how we described Unity uh, and Syndicate. And, it like, it, it was very much a repair job. I think, it, like, we described it as – uh, going from Unity to Syndicate was getting back to a you know the the start point. It wasn't reinventing yeah. the wheel, but it was putting the wheel back on the cart. Right. It was essentially like okay, so like, well, I, people disagree with me on this, but I wasn't a big fan of Assassin's Creed Three. Um, mm -hmm. I just had some. A lot, of, a lot of people share your opinion. I'm yeah. The, the only one who likes okay. Creed. That was a really mixed bag game. Like when it comes to gamers, like. It's yeah. like some people it's, liked it's, it, some people hated it. And when you get past right. the first, like, hour, hour and a half, um, the game, I think, gets significantly better. Mm. But a lot of people that I know, especially when, you know, working at GameStop through that release, they hated the game and they never got past that that point. They never got past playing as, um, what was the name? Yeah, Hatham. Dad. Hatham. That's what it is, yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, it's one of the, like, Assassin's Creed is one of the few series that I'll beat the games that I don't like. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Usually, like, I mean, I'm, I, uh, I can't really do it with, like, books or, uh, like, movies or TV very well. But, like, in games, if I'm just not into it, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm not going to put 20 hours into something that I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you know, I, like, Assassin's Creed is one of the few series that I'll play through no matter what, basically. Um, that I did not play um, Rogue. So that was the uh, the final one for 360 and PS3 that came out the same year as Black Flag. Um, I'm never going to. But, you know, other than that, I've played all the core games and I've beaten all the core games and everything. And I think after, um, what was it, Revelations, the third Assassin's Creed 2 game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, after that one, like, I just didn't enjoy any of them until Syndicate came out. And they, Whoa. like, I... part of it was, I mean, that was only two games, but... Like, Unity was just total trash. Uh, shouldn't even have been released. Whoa, whoa, um, whoa. Ba back up, uh, back up. You didn't like Assassin's Creed 4? Well, I mean, Black Flag was good. It, it was um, it was a tech demo for Skull and Bones. <laughs> you know? No, I, <laughs> I, see, that's, that's probably the one I put I, the most time into, to be honest. I think I have probably the unpopular opinion when it comes to Assassin's Creed. Uh, just going by, you know, me saying it. Uh, to several people. Um, well, I really liked one, and I played two going in, you know, really hyped, and I mm -hmm. disliked two, and it's because I disliked the character. Whoa. Exactly. Yeah, most, most people, most people play one. Most people love uh, Ezio. It, 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 it all comes. It all comes down to the character for me. 
One, but, I think, is the worst game in that franchise. It is so boring. It's so <laughs> repetitive. Like, mm-hmm. Altair is not interesting. Like, the combat's terrible. Like You played one first, right? Yeah. I, I played okay, one yeah, one. I'm just making sure, because there's a lot of people that played two and then went back and played one. I'm like, right. of course it's trash. No, right. I, was but, out, yeah. I was out of the franchise, like, out after one. <laughs> and then, like, it took a lot for me to be like, okay, I'll try two. And then, like, I was ba- I've been back in ever since. I just, I just yeah. love what one did. Like when it you know when it came out it was i mean there wasn't a lot like it like it kind of it kind of invented a lot of things that other games you know took uh-huh. um and and that's why i liked it and then going into two i was like this is exactly the same with a character that i like less oh, so that's funny improved, like, like uh, uh, i really I, like go on i'm unusual in that like i most games i play for the story and the characters and character development and conversations and choice and stuff. Assassin's Creed is not that for me. Um, I play, it's one of the only games I actually truly play as like a sandbox. Like I didn't like Minecraft cause there was nothing for me to do in it. <laughs> so like, I don't really play games like that usually. So um, Assassin's Creed is just in like a weird position for me. And uh, like, uh, I'll, I'll agree that um, I like, I liked, I'll, um, not out there. I, I liked the, uh, it's you. Shit. What's the second guy's name? Ezio. Ezio. Yeah, yeah. Ezio. I like Ezio more than Altair, but like the whole series is kind of plagued with like weird storytelling issues. Um I also really liked the like precursor thing and they dropped it. Uh I mean kind of, but like it's coming back now. Like Yeah, I, I it really looks like, like it. it looks like they're really gonna dive into it now and I'm for that. Um, I mean, and also, well, I mean, just even in Syndicate, like, it, yes, it was less emphasized, but I think the implications of that cloak that can supposedly bring people back from the dead is mm-hmm. huge. I think they're bringing Desmond back to life. And actually, because oh, I really like this story in Assassin's Creed. Like, it's not Oscar worthy. Like, it's not, it's not quote unquote good. Yeah, it's a very it's video game story. Fun. Yeah, it's yeah. super fun. Like, I'm so into the lore of Assassin's Creed. And, like, so, like, my dream is that, like, whatever the final game in this franchise is, like, this is, like, it. This is the last Assassin's Creed game that we're taking a long hiatus, is um, using that cloak to bring back every ass- every main character from all the games you've played and have, like, uh-huh. an ensemble cast of all of them all interacting, like, on one final mission to, um, uh, to like, stop the Templars, like, in the future. Like, this game takes place in, like, tw- uh, like uh, two, three hundred, like, um, yeah. You control them all with your PSVR neural implant. Yeah. <laughs> on your um, PlayStation 8. You just lay down and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll be and the you, first one in mine. You dream say. games. This, was, this generation, like, this, it's, they've always taken place in the past. This one takes place in the future, in, like, mm-hmm. you know, um, in, like, the year 3000. And uh, they use the cloak, and they bring back all the main characters. And, like, it's kind of like a an expanded GTA 5, where it's, like, instead of switching between three characters, you switch between... All like these 20 <laughs> yeah, yeah 68 and, like, they all have their own, like unique thing and uh they all like they all um interact with each other and stuff it's like a cool send-off to like mm-hmm. finally see all these characters like talking to each other because it's a little depressing like playing a game and knowing like oh the other one's dead like i didn't see yeah. him die but i know for sure he's dead just because of the passage of time yeah um, and like i think uh that was one of my main issues with four actually is that it had like the hollowest character like he was literally just like yeah. uh just like kind of like douchebag murders dude and takes his job yeah and like yeah. And he, he becomes a pro assassin in like 15 minutes yeah i didn't and, like uh, a lot of things with the story of assassin's creed 4 but it like it did get into the precursor stuff like the prophet or whatever yeah like, the yeah he's constantly reborn like again it's like huge i like that the rest of the franchise yeah but uh, I, I actually do – I've been thinking this for a while. Like, Ubisoft just needs to blend all of its games and just be like, these are all in the same universe. They're essentially all happening at the same time. And, like, they need to do, like, a Hitman-style thing that's like you buy a $60 game and it's like Ubisoft's 2017. And then you pay $30 for the add-on of each different game that you want in it. <laughs> so like you can you like add in your Assassin's Creed Origins and then you add in your you know Watch Dogs 3 and you tack on your Crew 2 and you have like a, an avatar that carries over in all of them and he's the main character because in all those games the main character uh, essentially doesn't matter 
Like, in fact, in a lot of them, the main character is the weakest link. And they could just be like, you know, if you had your custom character, they could be kind of like the uh, Bioware, like easy way out of like, oh, you're the you're like unit 15 and we plug you into the Abstergo machine and look at your brain, you know? Yeah, like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm on board with that. I mean, I personally hate character created characters because that means you can't have a strong character. Yeah, but then you just make Desmond and you're good to go. <laughs> I guess, yeah, but I mean, that doesn't also super make sense, like, Origins takes place in a different, like, completely time period than, Prove it. you know, Far Cry 5. <laughs> it takes place in Egypt. Uh, oh, yeah, you, you think. Well, I mean, I guess, like, whoever you play as outside of the Animus, I suppose, right. would be that character. But, I mean, why would they, why would they, why would they be doing that? Why would the same guy who's in the Animus in Assassin's Creed Origins also be the guy who's... He just goes and Origins. walks into a car and drives across the U.S. and then he hacks <laughs> Chicago. and <laughs> it, He goes, like, he gets stranded on an island and starts shooting dinosaurs and shit. All of, all of their stuff is just through the Abstergo <laughs> machine. Yeah, yeah that, that'd be... I mean, I, I get it. I, I, I can see it going down, but I don't know how they work everything into that. Beyond you know? good but, and evil? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just a kid at home playing. You you play a kid. You're basic. We just made dot hack. Good job, everyone. Well, no, job. I'd like to thank a, uh, filter cord the and ball wizard kid. <laughs> you're like, uh, oh no, what was the TV show? Oh man, it's um, it's an entire TV series uh, where it turns out to all be like a kid's dream. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, no, no. Uh, there, was, like... there was there was. There was a like an old sitcom, and then it, it used to guest host from like a ton of other shows. God, I can't believe I lost this. But it's like a it's like a popular like, um, like almost every show has been connected to it. It was uh Tommy like, the kid's name is Tommy Westfall. Look at let me look at all the shows. Um, while you look that up, um, I mean Watch Dogs is confirmed to be in the same universe as Assassin's Creed. Right. Yeah, because they reference Abstergo. Right. Um, okay, so it was the uh, it was the TV show. Saint Elsewhere that ran on uh, NBC. So now I'm going to do a whole primer on this stupid shit. Uh, oh boy, here we go. It was from 1982 to 1988. <laughs> but this one at the, they basically like, they just got canceled and they like kind of didn't see it coming, I guess. So they just had to quickly make a final episode. And the final episode, there's this like autistic character, like this, this, uh, I don't know. He's like a 12 year old kid or something who's autistic. And like, it, eventually, in the in the finale, it reveals that the entire series was in his head. Like he was just imagining it, and like, uh, and then like that show had a bunch of guest hosts on, so like, uh, it would like host other shows that were on at the time. So like every, uh, like every show that guest start on it so including the x-files and law and order are technically all in this kid's head <laughs> <laughs> and like uh there's like apparently there's there's like hundreds or like thousands of shows that must be this kid's like fictional like mental universe because they're all like the actor like um you know in law and order munch uh he was in every law and order series and several other shows where he was the same character and the same actor just because they thought he was cool, and he's probably a producer of the show or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, they kept like putting him on all this other shit, and like it, technically every other show that he was on, everything in the entire like expanded, you know, Law and Order universe is all fictional from this autistic kid's like mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Jesus. Uh, and and you really want you really want Ubisoft to go that way with everything Assassin's Creed? That'd be crazy. Yeah, for real. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, there's also I mean there are also there are things you can extrapolate from Far Cry that points it to also being in the same universe. Uh, but I would love that. That would right. be next. What if it was all just a? Uh, uh, just how that showed up. Just it, it it was all like everything, even the like Animus and Abstergo. Um, was all just a, a game that the rabbits are sitting down playing. Jesus God! <laughs> it all ties. It all ties back to them, and they, they do. They're in a lot of. They're in a lot of their games. Like even like, like playing Steep. They have like 
snow monuments to the rabbits in the, the rabbits, in the game. yeah. And then it turns out that rabbits are just the fever dream of Miyamoto <laughs> <laughs> on his deathbed. <laughs> and probably not long, but hopefully like 150 years. To 200. I mean, let's not... Well, yeah, let's be realistic. It's a Japanese dude we're talking about. If he goes to that village, he could easily live to be 312. Hmm. Um, <laughs> it's crazy that Mario and Rabbids looks good, despite the fact that I hate Rabbids. Oh, my God. Did you, exactly. you should have seen... Uh, when we, we watched uh, Ubisoft, it was the only one I was able to be involved in that we watched live. Yeah. And, um, you know, they opened with that, like, Rabbids Kingdom battle or whatever, and it's like... The whole time I'm like, oh, this is fucking stupid. And then yeah. they like play 10 minutes of it. And I'm like, oh, shit. And they play, it was, like, yeah. yeah, they get through it. I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to buy this game. It was it was every single person watching with us. Everyone's like, oh, that looks really stupid. Rabbit suck. And then yeah. it went on and it went on. And one of our other friends, Ed, he was just like, shit, now I have to go buy a Switch for uh -huh. like with that game, too. Like I was buying a Switch for other reasons, but now I have to buy that game along with the switch yeah it's crazy um uh i wonder if it's gonna end up being dumb still though i wonder like the it will play if the, if the gameplay is enough to save like all the terrible humor that's gonna be in that game i mean it looks like you can set up your team to you know play however you want so all luigi's all luigi's <laughs> one code but all luigi's yeah, yeah you're right you're right <laughs> but i mean you can set up an entire mario you know, like, I'm going to play that game, hopefully, you know, just... Rabbit-free. Depending. Yeah, rabbit-free. And it's... I mean, they're just... They're not interested. Mo rabbits, mo problems is what I say. And, <laughs> and of course, of course, Austin and I working at GameStop, how many rabbits games were there for the Wii? Oh, Jesus God. So Dude. many, so many, I, I just got tired of counting them and I just threw them away. Like, well, yeah, we would get... um Whichever one was, like, given away with, like... Probably that like link crossbow zapper thing. Like people would just return those because like they would immediately they buy the bundle and then just give us the game right away. Yeah, I don't want. They this. would open it up and then just give it <laughs> and, like, to you. They would release those rabbits games. Like it's not just that we had a million copies of one game. Like instead of making expansions or like DLC or anything, they just release a whole new game. So we had like there was like forty rabbits games released in five years. Yeah. It was it was nuts. The Wii was a hassle. Yeah, the Wii was a real hassle. <laughs> that's, so, that's so weird to say, but like the whole the, the whole thing. It was, it was the Wii, a, it man, was a whole really. thing. The Wii killed THQ. <laughs> I don't know how, but it did. <laughs> it's gonna be a whole other podcast we do. It's just gonna be you getting to the bottom of stuff, like <laughs> just like that figuring out. Did. Figuring how, how how every movie is somehow connected to Kevin Bacon. Like, it is. <laughs> what is it? Uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon? <laughs> or eight degrees or something? Um, wait, uh, I had a question about something now. Um, no, never mind. It's gone. It's nah, gone. Yeah, right, so back to Tommy Westfall. I think he imagined me, too. <laughs> No, see, you should seriously look that up because it's got links to like every show that's involved. It's really funny. Oh man, yeah, absolutely, Tommy Westfall, look it up. That's um, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in the uh, description. <laughs> He's making like a, a note right now. I am. What are you guys most excited for coming out of E3? What game? Um, do you mean just in general, like in general, just yeah. uh, or specifically that E3 made me into? Because we can do both. Both, yeah, give me both. Um. I would say that the E3, like, my biggest thing that was, like, kind of a surprise that I'm really into, um, I mean, I guess uh, uh, beyond good and evil, but I kind of need to see more of that first. Um, I am really excited for that. And then uh, as far as, like, I'm just legitimately excited for Skull and Bones. Oh, well, okay, that's cool. I haven't heard much uh, much love for Skull and Bones. So well, it's just the good part of Assassin's Creed 4. But you can your boat. <laughs> <clears throat> what? I don't think you can get off your boat, though. Yeah. That's what I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting to see if you can jump from your boat to someone else's boat. Why would, I, why would I get off my boat? And, and get rid of them, you know? I don't know. I want that. I want that to be a thing. But I don't think it's going to be. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. 
Um, that's cool though. I uh, just get to hear some some good things from from, the, from that. Uh, yeah, game. I haven't heard a lot of good things. Yeah, just okay. in general. Um, just in general, I'm mo- I'm most excited for Shadows of War. Okay. Um, I'm really into like the systems driven stuff, so um, I, I really like what they're doing. My like. My most anticipated is South Park. Uh, I think I probably said it like a million times on all of our podcasts. Uh, so going in, I wasn't like definitely like blown away. But the thing that going into E3 that just was crazy and r- like like right away, uh, aside from uh, Beyond Good and Evil Two, because that was that was a that wasn't just uh, like the announcement of a game. That was a gaming moment in history now. Like, because that was, that was incredible. Like the dude was so passionate about the project and you could tell when he came out and that's just, it's fantastic to see, but what took it? Yeah. But what took it for me was I think all of Nintendo. I did not, I went into E3 like going, well, you know, we're going to get a little bit from Nintendo, but we're going to get this from Ubisoft, and that's going to be cool. And Sony's going to come out swinging, and Microsoft's going to have some cool stuff. And, you know, of course, Bethesda. And when it got to the end, and then I was like, man, we've seen a lot of good stuff. And uh-huh. then Nintendo continued to deliver, continued to deliver. Everything that they announced, I was like, I, I want that. And that's why, like, it was just all of Nintendo. Like, of course, I want... Um, I want Mario, but I mean, even just the things that they announced uh, that they're like, hey, we're working on Metro, uh, Metroid Prime 4, the Pokemon RPG. It's just, it It was kind mm-hmm. of, Nintendo was like the gift that kept giving. It was <laughs> like you opened a box and it had a present in it, but there was also another wrapped box in it. And then you unwrap that and the same thing happened just over and over again. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it, for me, it was all of Nintendo. Uh just so much anticipation. That's cool. Um, what about you? Uh, I so uh, big, I'll do same thing. Like biggest like surprise coming out of it. Like thing I was not excited for going in and was excited for leaving was mm-hmm. uh, Shadow of the Colossus remake. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah. Like, that's happening. What? Like that's crazy. I didn't expect that to ever happen. Like especially so soon. Like that game's not that old. They got a remaster. Like last generation. And they're mm-hmm. just like, no, 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 we want to do a remake. And I'm like, yes, yes, more of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was so excited for that, man. It's, man, it's going to be so much fun to go back through with how good that's going to look. Um, and just, like, hopefully, like, no frame rate issues. Uh, I'm so excited for that. And then um, the, something, like, that I was excited for going in and even more excited for coming out was Days Gone. Like, mm-hmm. I, that game is trying to do things that just, like, other open world games have not tried yet, which is just super cool. So those are my two things. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Um, you know, we've seen, you've obviously just talking to us on this podcast, have seen a bit more than we have. Um, mm-hmm. And it's cool to get some insight on that. But sitting back, I'm like, I'm excited for Days Gone, but I'm like, I'm not sure exactly what it's doing, like, like gameplay wise or whatever that is um, kind of like groundbreaking. Like, what are they doing that no one else is doing? Mm-hmm. Sure. Is my uh, question. Just like the way that the the way that the freakers like are living things, I think is is really different. Okay. Um, okay. So they're kind uh, of like a mind of their own. That, yeah. Kind yeah, of like yeah. twenty eight yeah. days later, more than. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Walking Dead. Definitely. Definitely. Um. What What is something you guys expected to be there or wanted to be there and wasn't? Oh, that one's easy for me. Um. That was, but Beth- like at Bethesda's, uh, I think it was just everyone at MGI talking about it, and we all got kind of hyped up on Bethesda having... Um, uh, Starfield. Starfield, yeah. yeah. And we were like, we, we know it's been trademarked, and they don't have anything big this year. Uh, like, it's not that it's not big, and I think I've said this before on a podcast, like, Wolfenstein and Doom, I don't think, for me, they're not, like, massive... Like, they're not system seller games. You know? They're They're the games that you enjoy that kind of work in the like middle of the pack for Bethesda, but their biggest games like, like fallout and elder scrolls. Um, I, I feel like those ones are the system sellers and those mm. are the ones that you expect to see something capped off at the end of the show. You know, every, 
you know, every, not every year, but every couple of years. And I, I was kind of hoping that they would have thrown that, um, that third epic, you know, end of the, end of the presentation game in this year. I, I was hoping, but. So you guys think Starfield's real? Um, I mean, well, it, I mean, they have a trademark. They have a trademark on it. So, I mean, they're doing something with the name at least, but yeah. it, it depends on what it is, you know? Because the rumor is, obviously, as the name might imply, it's a sci-fi game, mm. but it somehow ties Fallout to Elder Scrolls, like, defines how they take place in the same universe. Yes. And that's exactly what I want. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Especially if they, um, if they do, like, a time travel thing in it, I'd be all over that. Um, so, like, well, the rumor is that Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls franchise takes place in the future and follows the past. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. and I'm wondering like, the Earth just gets, like, super fucked up <laughs> from global warming or something? Well, I'm wondering, like, the radiation, like, eventually down the road, the radiation fallout. Kind of mutates down, everybody. Fallout, mutates everyone into Khajiits and dragons and shit mm-hmm. like that. That explains um, Striders. What's the Strider? In, uh, um, Morrowind. The big like walking like stilt monsters. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't remember those. It was like the fast travel. Oh, oh just okay. these big creepy bugs. Oh, okay. It's like um, a daddy long legs, but but I I mean I feel air. like they've already set up like the big backstory. It almost feels it's like alternate timeline Fallout is for like Amer like kind of American history. So it's weird to see. I don't know that used in any other in any other way, you know. Mm. I don't know. Um, well, I'm just waiting to see how all of Bethesda ties into um, the Ubisoft universe. Oh yeah, of course, because <laughs> it has to somehow. The Ubiverse. Um, also, <laughs> I heard something, and I, don't, I haven't done the research to see if this is true, but I don't know. You guys might be a ref with Elder Scrolls lore, or uh, it all takes place in like the Dream of a God or something like that. Like none of it's real. It'll take um, place in the dream of a god. I think it's true. I think one of the gods like dreamed the earth. I think it's like the part of the creation myth or whatever. Yeah, uh, there's a ton of there's a ton of those like this is what yeah. you know. And this all, is what it is. And yeah, where a lot comes of them from, kind of, uh, kind of conflict with each other too. Right. So. Oh, okay, so it's just like one crazy religious cult is just like this is how we exist, and someone else is like, no, no, no it's it's this. That yeah, it's exactly how it's playing out. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Uh, it was, it but was, it was pretty crazy. I, I, I would. I was like, well, hold on. <laughs> I, I would love to see exactly how they would tie those together. Like that would be crazy. And then to get a game on top of, on top yeah, of that, really tying them together. Is. It's the game about tying those together. <laughs> I'd be down for that. That'd be cool. Uh, if Starfield was like a mobile game. Where I like draw constellations and name them, I would download it fifty six times. Like it doesn't matter what it is, I'm getting he, it. He'd buy it more than Skyrim. Yeah, they just keep pumping them out, don't they? That's crazy. I'll take uh, six more versions of Skyrim, please. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm excited. So, uh, I, truth be told, I never played Skyrim. Um, oh my I fucking really god! Like, Get so off. <laughs> so well. Like, I was waiting for it to come to PSVR, and so now it did, so now I'm... Yeah, in. right. You're um, waiting in 2011 yeah, for it to come to PlayStation Move <laughs> I2? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been playing a long game, because, like, no one wants to play a game they've played a million times in VR, but I get to play a game I've never played before in VR. So he does have, have, have a... He has a good point. Player. He has a good point there. But also because his mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's a good place to cap it off. You guys have anything else that you uh, want to toss out there? <clears throat> no, I think um, no. I know a lot of people have said that like E3 has some shit they need to fix for mm-hmm. next E3, and they're like, nope. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see if they do like you know if there's anything that comes up that they're like, okay, we're gonna tweak this, we're gonna have this like visitor like um, you know public only area, and we're gonna have this like you know, be able to, like, flag the industry people around them easier or something. I mean, you know, they're saying, like, oh, it was a huge success or whatever, and that's great, but, I mean, you can always improve. Right. Definitely. Uh, they made a lot of money. That doesn't mean people were happy about it. Right. So, yeah. Um, 
be. It's the Assassin's Creed effect where like Unity sold great, but it's syndicates where you're gonna feel the hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you made a lot of money this year, E3. Like this that doesn't mean next year people are gonna be as happy about it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. Cool. Also, yeah. thank you guys for having me on this podcast. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for uh um, thank yeah, thanks for coming over and you know, shedding some light on some cool stuff that we were yeah, uh interested in. Um, mm-hmm. But as always, at the end of the stream, uh, you guys can always check out all this stuff and more, facebook.com backslash Mammoth Games Inc. You can also follow us uh, on Twitter at Mammoth Games. And don't forget, um, you can get this on other streaming sources. So if you're listening to it on Podbean and you want it like just on your phone or whatever so you can listen to it while you work out or on your way home or something, uh, you can check it out on iTunes and Google Play. Yep. Um, and... Uh, Drake over here, he has uh you you have a podcast, right? What is uh what is your podcast? Um uh, if you want to shout out one more time. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's called Divecast. Um the YouTube channel is called Dive. Mm-hmm. Um and uh we do a few things over there. Uh the our main show is Game Dive where we uh dive into a specific area of the video game industry. Um it's been mostly general stuff right now, but I'm going to start doing a few episodes where we're diving specifically into like a design talk about like specific things so one of the upcoming episodes is talking about like this one particular puzzle in god of war and like why it's really well designed and then mm-hmm. we're doing another one where we're uh uh i recently finished ukulele and i have some thoughts about it but instead of, like just kind of like doing a critique on that one game i want to compare it to other um platformers and like what it did right and what it did wrong and like right. what it could pull from mm-hmm. other platformers to improve its general like overall design and basically just like getting into like what makes a platformer good like what are good designs for a platformer uh and some stuff like that and then yeah we also have a podcast called Divecast, and then uh we do a film co- podcast uh not super frequently but every once in a while and uh uh we played around with a name for a while and we've landed on back to the features because huh. every episode we also do a, a retrospective on um a particular film okay so, okay cool that's cool i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to sign up on that yeah we'll uh um, when we when we put this up on um, like Podbean and everywhere else, we'll we'll drop a like maybe drop a link to um, your mm-hmm. stuff in there as well, so people can check yeah. that out. Appreciate it. Cool. Well, yeah, yeah. for uh, Drake, myself, Night Swarm, and Filter Court, as always, thanks for hanging out, guys, and we will catch you next time. All right.